Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, which is brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Simpson is continuously putting out solid, well-built, lightweight motorcycle helmets that not only keep your ass safe, but give you that aggressive, badass look that Simpson has been known for. Head on over to SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com to check out all the amazing options they have and finishes and uh, get yourself one of those bad boys. And don't forget to follow them on the gram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. On today's episode, we have none other than the Two Lane Life crew. Me and Jaden uh, made it down to SoCal and we stopped by the Two Lane Life headquarters, sat down in their awesome little studio to just have a great conversation. And um, we had Lance, Galen, and Josh on the, on the uh, microphones as long, along with Jaden. So anyway, had a great time. Can't wait for you to hear it. But you know, first we got to check out these sponsors and then we're going to jump right into this episode. House of Harley Davidson, located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has your HD covered with the performance upgrades we all want, along with service, sales, and a stacked parts department. Head on over to houseofharley.com where you can order the parts you need for your bike along with all the best gear and clothing available. Drop the Fast Life offer code to save yourself 13% on your online purchases and give these guys a follow at House of Harley on Instagram. Lexan Moto is my Bluetooth headset company and has been for over three years now. The quality and sound and battery life make those long days on the open road much more enjoyable. Their latest headset, the G16, is designed to make group rides much better with a 16 rider comm system bluetooth 5.0 music sharing and fast usb-c charging among the many things lexan does for our motor community they also offer the best customer service in the industry the team at lexan just dropped their new lexan smart tire pump as well which is a portable tire pump that can fit easily in your saddlebags check out lexan-moto.com to see all the awesome products which are all designed to make life on two wheels better. And don't forget to drop the Fast Life offer code at checkout to save yourself 15%. And lastly, give these guys a follow on Instagram at Lexan Moto. Thunder Max and their ECM computers are designed to provide your EFI equipped Harley Davidson with the most advanced auto tuning on the market. And they just released their modules for the 2021 and up HD models. A Thunder Max ECM eliminates tuning hassles when upgrading your exhaust or air cleaner or when adding a cam or big bore kit. Thunder Max is also in the suspension game with their iRide rear suspension. This is a performance air ride which gives you the ability to adjust many aspects from the handlebar mounted touchscreen. This rear suspension is the best of both worlds. Check out these products at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE to save yourself 10% off and follow Thunder Max EFI on Instagram. I have been riding with Lucky Dave's seats and handlebars on almost all my bikes since 2016, and I'm happy to announce their partnership with us here at the Fast Life Podcast. Their seats have always been the perfect fit for my ass, and with that trademark styling that I have come to love from the LD brand. Lucky Dave's also has some of the most dope handlebar options from their classic San Diego bar to their Peacemaker bar and riser combos. They got what you need. I'm personally running the Peacemaker bars on both my T-Sport and Bagger. Head on over to LuckyDaves.com to check out all of their options for your HD and grab yourself some swag while you're there. And lastly, give my guys a follow on Instagram at LuckyDaves. Now here we go with the two lane life crew. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast and we are uh, rolling. All right. Man, this is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for getting us fucked up before we even start the podcast, Galen. That's his job. That's his job right there. Uh, that's the part that's the part I love about him. Yeah. Cuz he's like the there's a B-roll to Galen that, that I guess the the normal public doesn't get to see oh, you got through it. uh through the Tulane life and uh this dude's a wild man and uh I just, I just hope. I never third, heard of it that way, but I've thought of it that way. But I like how you describe it. That's really good. Yeah, it's like you got he's a B-roll. B-roll. Yeah. Well, it's just you know because I love you. I appreciate that. I, I'm just throwing a little, you know. Hey, let's have a, a lunch and a. I've, I'm definitely beers. looking for more father Fantastic figures in my life. Lunch too. <laughs> 
I don't know. Let me run it by Galen and see what he says about this. You know, I need a fatherly advice. And, Anytime. You know, yeah, I appreciate that. Especially over a beer. Oh, yeah. For sure. Then we meet Jaden. Mm. And like uh, he body slams people. He's a body slammer, <laughs> trying to get married. Kinda. Well, I know. Yeah, trying to get out of getting married. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I didn't say too much. <laughs> so what are you guys up to, dude? We're in California again, uh, the land of uh, motorcycle opportunity. The mecca. <laughs> the mecca. Yeah. But you know, straight up, like. You guys, y'all do so much every year that it's so easy to bring you back on. I mean, we could almost do a quarterly podcast and you'd fill it with uh, content with just the stories from the road. And, and I mean, from my perspective on the other side of the Rockies looking over here and what you guys have been doing, you're just getting bigger. And you're, you're – I know that at the core of it, Tulane Life is just about jumping on the highway and riding and trying to capture as much as possible for the, the viewer to check out. But – Man, like you're like almost at Seinfeld level, dude. Like you're almost like <laughs> season five coming soon. <laughs> What's that? How how is that like? That's got to be surreal. I mean, I heard you say in the car like you were listening to the one of the or you're watching one of the first videos and the audio and things like that. But now that just it, it it's funny how you progress into like that better quality. And it, it's not like a night and day difference. It's just like it rolls to that point. If that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, when we started this, and by the way, we were you were the first person to ask us to be on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, y'all were already so, riding. Yeah, and you did that, that was show. like March or April of 2020, and we just started. Yeah. Uh, and the whole intent was just to take these stories that we found over years of traveling together and share them. Now, when you go back to edit them, we're like, well, how the hell did we do that? Yeah. <laughs> and and I think there's just been this progression, as you said, over time, where Josh has continued to evolve as an editor. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. he's looked at YouTube, you know, and other videos, and he he studies uh, different ways, you know, to lay down tracks, yeah, if you will, to, to expose the story. And so we yeah. we about a year and a half ago decided we wanted to be more of a production, you know, cinematic. Yeah. And that's kind of when we took the turn. And it's not per se, we could argue, it's not YouTube style. Yeah. Because it's not a lot of clickbait. We're trying to tell a story and we're trying to create a narrative that is positive where people can say, damn, like you guys, by the time you get home, you'll have done 7,000 miles. But you've been on hot springs with naked people. Yeah. Cody put up a picture of that big old uh, Sasquatch. I mean, you've been in Oregon where a guy bought you steaks and, and had crab legs and yeah. had huckleberry pie. I mean, that's what it's all about. Exactly. The stories on the road are... Uh, and not just a guy, but friends. A friend. Yeah. Right. Great friends now. Yeah, but right. he bought your bike. Yeah, he, he bought the bike. He fell in love with traveling. Uh, and he just, you know, he's leaning into it. And he's trying to also... That's one of the other good things about, like, being a group of guys or just people that are on the road and you're and you're putting it out there you know the old saying the role will provide you know what i mean and it really does it i mean does. you get hospitality left and right you you know this couch or this i mean we had people putting up there was eight of us right you know yeah i got room we'll figure it out you know steve's house in uh in in, yeah. in norcal like dude has a couch a table and a bed and we all <laughs> I mean, he's Managed, got a he's, he's got a trap away. house. A well, I mean, <laughs> trap house. That's why we came up with the, uh, the we're shaking hands with America because we have mm. we now have friends across this whole country. Yeah, we can go to Maine right now, go to Kimberly's, have some lobster. We could go to Williams, Arizona, Tech, whatever. I'll, yeah. I'll take it even further. Yeah. Who did we have in here at the end of week last week? A couple, f and his buddy from Croatia. Right. We've had German, two, three, four different sets of German couples coming in. Mm. And they're out traveling again. Finally, they can get back to the U.S. And the yeah. Canadians this morning. Canadians this morning. You know? yeah. So it's, it's not just our local guys. And, and uh, it's a worldwide reach. And you know, we're in 52 countries with our YouTube channel. Nice. Which is crazy. Maybe more now. Maybe more. Maybe more. You know, well, it's I mean, interesting. We've had people say, like, you guys film so much. We've had guys that have gone on, like, written some trips with us not the whole trip but parts of it mm -hmm. and they're like can't believe what you guys are doing like filming and stopping and doing and this and that and someone said is that like uh are your trips now work 
then it's like not really because we we dig what we're doing mm -hmm. so we're we're like every time we're on a trip we're creating it's almost like an open canvas we're out there we're seeing what we want to see now we're going to show people what we want to get into that are you able to take the time to show like we we actually had this conversation at a campground i think we were talking about this and and uh in gold beach oregon we were sitting down because our buddy james big fans of you guys uh but he's also like really in he's a big guy on youtube and not he watches a lot of youtube he understands cinematic he understands telling a story and i always tell people it's like yeah like we can get the gopros out we can catch a couple angles we can with our hands right but when you have that when you're well, you know what it's like when you come around that corner on the coast and then you get that vista and the fucking steam's coming up like that's a shot right you see it that's a shot now okay how do I want to show the world these bikes coming around this curve? Right. And that's when the drone comes into play. Right. That's when, you know, having an off, you know, off bike camera catching it coming through the canyon. Right. To tell the story, right? Right. That's the cinematic stuff. And I mean, like, I tell the guys, like, dude, I want to do that. But it's going to be a month long trip. Right. Of us, like, inching our way across America. Like, right. you guys have figured it out to where you still make the miles, but it's. You know, you still got to do the stops. You still got to make the fucking shots and things like that. So. But it's like fun because you're creating. Yeah. Well, and, you have ownership of it. Yeah. yeah the exactly. comms have actually helped us quite a bit because we can say, uh, hey, get your camera up. Hey, put it down. Come through frame. You know, so we're directing as we're writing. Nice. I mean, that's. And, and really what's happened in the past is it's added time to our day. We used to get in and call it five or six. Yeah. Now it could be eight or nine. Oh. But. But you're also probably trying to get the better hours to shoot in some yeah, areas. It's ended that? up happening yeah. that way. I mean, there's, we found ways to work around it. But as you know, with camera stuff, working with ND filters and this and that, even riding through a tunnel or a shadow, got to switch that out, fix it before yeah. that lighting changes. Same thing throughout the day. But um, definitely the comms. Like he was saying, hey, come through frame. Some of these shots, like if we couldn't talk, I couldn't tell them, hey, I'm going to – I'm going to shoot you from behind and get you past me. And then I'm going to run ahead and have you do it again while I'm facing forward or that type of thing. You know, it's yeah. a lot, a lot of communication. Yeah, like there. code words. Do y'all say like, I'm coming in hot Tom cat and shit like that or <laughs> fucking break. No. Well, actually he says, I'm coming in behind and it's like, Hey dude, let's figure out a different kind of thing here, man. I know you guys are young and you're into all this free love shit. <laughs> I, I'm on your six, man. Yeah. That sounds a lot uh, better. So it's like, you know, you go back to saying it's cool. You have an editor, you have a guy that films and he um, is passionate about it, but you know, and also saying looks at stuff on YouTube, educates himself, this and that. But the bottom line, if you don't have it in your soul, yeah, and you don't have that feel of that ability, whether you're a, you could be a hairstylist, but you can be a bad hairstylist. Mm -hmm. It's got to be in you, and, and he's got it in him. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. also doing the models right next to you. Right. So that's, you know, and at a young age, which is commendable. Right. That was yeah. a, the plus right there, the fact that he rides. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, we're on bikes. Well, Let's go. think about the uh, countryside he's seen. Oh, yeah. In two and a half years. You know, his first long trip was on it. What was your Yamaha? That was a FZ07. He did a thousand miles on it in in like three days, two days, and we took him over Kit Carson Pass and mm -hmm. froze him to death. Um, but that was kind of the launch to his journey of travel. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was kind of my that was my first fucked up love. It was like you know you meet a chick when you're young, get treated real bad, and you're like, wow, I really like her. Yeah. <laughs> but but that trip like now even on this recent trip coming into into the dead hills or the black hills when we started hitting snow and rain i was getting stoked it's like i i like this i like doing things that other people aren't necessarily doing or probably wouldn't even enjoy doing yeah and then combining that with the rest of the great stuff of traveling on motorcycles just can't beat it can't beat it it does create like some kind of obstacle yep. and uh whatnot that could depending on the mindset the perspective of it could be oh fuck today sucks you know well we me and Jaden, many times on the podcast prior to this one talked about uh on this trip about how we loved idaho and we got rain on the entire time so it's just like this weird like if it was this badass in shitty conditions like how amazing is this when the roads are dry oh, yeah. and it's not fucking freezing well the the fun stuff is always going to be fun the easy stuff is always going to be great it's the bad stuff, and not that I want to ride it any more than anybody else, but when you can find yourself being comfortable 
being uncomfortable, I don't know, to me, it, it's like a whole other level of enlightenment or whatever you, ever, you want to call it. Yeah, it's the... You know, I, I think you could you guys could attest to this. When you're riding across the plains or the desert and it sucks, right? Then you can always say, like, man, some fuckers did this in horses. Yeah, and absolutely. Like, mm-hmm. they, we you talk know, like, about that all the and time. It's, and, and, and for me, what I do for that for me is, like, I'm not even gonna stick. They're doing it for two months at a time. Like it, they're taking two months to get across and their two lives states. Depended on it. Yeah, yeah. we're doing. And this I'm for like, fun. I'm yeah. gonna be in a better place at the end of the day. And I'm like, this sucks. Fuck me. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like a, it's a perspective thing and an appreciation for literally the motherfuckers that did it before us. Right. With what they had, you know what I'm saying? We're travelers. Yeah. And, and you I, know, mean, I always say it with time travelers. Our bikes are time machines. We go back in time and we can have those feelings that you're yeah. saying. Yeah. But the desert, like you say, you come around the corner of beautiful Vista. We've been out in the desert on I-40 in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, it's golden hour. Yeah. And there's shadows, and the, the spring had some rain, and now there's like these green things with flowers. And it's like, now all of a sudden you're finding the beauty in the desert. Mm-hmm. So everywhere you go, if you can't find that shot, then you're just riding. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, well, I was just going to say, that conversation we had last week, how many of your best riding or trip or any experience stories for that matter were it was a perfect sunny day and it was great versus it was fucked up we're riding through the rain so and so got a flat this happened that happened you look at it mostly at the end of the day you're like wow it was a gnarly day it was kind of cool during during so maybe not but a year later two years later you're like dude that was rad you know definitely talk about it more and it definitely makes those beers that night more enjoyable absolutely earn your beers it's like they're Shawshank beers on top of the roof yeah. after they retard it. <laughs> that great. Yeah. Just men feeling like men. <laughs> <laughs> Jaden. He's a fucking dude. It's awesome. There's a reason why he's here. Frain on you, man. Come on. And you know, there's nothing better than rolling into a town. I, I like the actual artwork of bars. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love seeing bottles and the lights. And, the, and it's just like you crush these miles. You had a great dinner. And you just walk into a bar and... It's just awesome. Nothing that, like it. You know, it brings me to that that the the bar in Missoula, the first one we went to, with all the pictures. So, yeah. walk into this bar. Obviously, I love photography, and there's portraits all over the wall. The, line, the whole bar is lined with portraits, nice big size, almost like the size. Like if you were to put two portraits in the tile, the, the ceiling tiles. Yeah. And they're all black and white, obviously from a photographer. And we ended up asking finally, hey man, what? Who were all these people? And like, oh, they're regulars. No way. The That's regulars awesome. from, you know, some of these are from the 80s and 70s. And I was like, that's that's such a fucking dope-ass idea. That's rad. You know? Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, the way that bars decorate, the you know, the different vibes. and Well, it's, you. I think, and I kind of, I, I don't kind of, I admire what you guys do annually. Mm-hmm. You got a group of guys that want to go ride and explore the country. And you were talking about at lunch, like you you only have a couple places left in the country you can go explore because you've been so many places. But the whole jam is just like when Jaden started riding with you. I mean, sometimes you have to go to a Taco Bell, but it's the places like that that you see yeah. that you're like, damn, like that's that'll be in your memory bank forever. Yeah, but you can't you know stop what I mean? riding. You can't say oh, yeah, I've yeah, all for 50 sure. states because go back to a state you've already been in. You're gonna see a different movie every time. That the, so the, that's kind of the 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 plan that we're looking at is okay. Well, where do we want to micro focus our trip now? Right. You know, we've been trying to do two weeks and like reach the far corners of America, which, you know, for us we have it better than some people that are like coast ridden, if right. you will. Like for you guys to go do Maine is a much longer haul than we do right. for Maine. But even Maine was a bitch for That's us. That's why we're going to move our headquarters somewhere in the middle of the country. No, you're we not. We just don't know no, where you're not. not. Texas. <laughs> don't come to Texas. We're never going to get any work done, dude. Yeah. <laughs> get ahead of the curve. Oklahoma City is where it's at. Yeah, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City is going to be the next big spot. How about Tennessee? Uh, Tennessee's popping. It is popping. I but think South Dakota. We'll go to Denver. I think Southern <laughs> Utah or Arizona. I'm down with that, too. Yeah. Not bad. We'll be out of here one day. Yeah, I'm not I mean, staying here. It's it's probably getting harder and harder. My wife's dogging me every time she sees something she doesn't like. She says, "Why are we still here?" Yeah, uh, don't, don't sleep on Idaho. Don't sleep on Idaho at all, especially the Boise area, which I think is kind of southern I saw, Idaho. 
It's, yeah, you just don't want to have California plates when you roll in there. Exactly. I was going to say, I saw a post today where somebody was there with California plates, and someone left a note on their door yeah. or on their windshield, go like, go the fuck home. Well, it's like, we're not that hardcore in Texas, yeah. I don't think. Like, we are we have southern we're hospitality. But here's the thing, yeah. like, with the two lanes and what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. We've been traveling. Like I said, we have friends everywhere. We could pick anywhere right now. We went in there and said, hey, people we know, we're moving here. Yeah. And we would probably be welcomed. You probably want to be somewhere where you have a baseline where you can still ride all year long. Yeah. At least leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. Arizona, Utah. Yeah. Southern yeah. Utah, northern Arizona. We usually, we've usually we left here in rain, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, like, if, if a storm's coming and we have a trip planned, we're gone. It is what it is, yeah. We're not going to go up, postpone it, cancel it. The, so the thing is, like, what you guys represent and what our camp out represents, What? how much is it going to cost me to get you guys out to the camp out next year? Uh, just that big jar that Joey Barella brings yeah <laughs> <laughs> and his cowboy hat yeah this cowboy hat was a we fucking party trip it, you know but you I, guys your your group of friends and what you guys do like in what we do mm-hmm. I mean we're we are all the, like the same the vibe same, yeah just different parts of the country in different times of year we just do it as we got to get our content but mm-hmm. you guys are badass Long distance riders. I mean, that's I, what, yeah. I mean, that's the con. We, we, we're trying to. I, I'm not trying to keep shit alive. I'm just doing this because I love it, yeah. right? And uh, and for me, what I try to tell people is like, I I have you know yes, I'm sponsored by Lexan, loving to death, but I haven't even like got to the point where I've needed to listen to something on a headset yet. I've been so in my head, right? Like just working out a couple problems in life and thinking about all the. It's if you think about it for like some people in business, like this is the one time that you're not, you know, bombarded with like phone calls and emails and kids and wife and blah blah blah. You're like you can actually dissect some of the thoughts right. in your head and figure out what you want to do and how you want to uh, you know uh, attack the next part of your you know the the next couple of days or months of your life. And I need it, man. It's like a reset for it's, me well, all the time. We were talking about it earlier too, like. You know, when you first started mm. to where you're at today and think about how it's grown, A, and then B, it's grown because people have talked about it because they've created memories. Yeah. And it's like, I got to get back there again next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you've changed people's lives. I think that when people just ride bikes across the country and don't make friends, they're less likely to want to come back. So for me, it's like, yeah, I want to go ride PCH again, but dude, we got a fucking party with Homeboy again. I love that guy. Nothing better than talking to people you just met. Yeah. And then they're like stoked you're on a bike. And then, then we were in a bar in uh, Wyoming. Was it Lusk? And we're sitting there eating lunch, and there's two farmers and a, a wife and some people behind us. And Galen hears him talking about farming, and he starts talking about farming. And he's having a conversation yeah. with farmers, and they're, they know where we're from, and they know what we <laughs> – but they were like real open and cool about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was great. So you're right. The conversation is the. Because I know so, farming. Yes. <laughs> I was actually interested at my in my background. Um, I have people that lived in southern Idaho, part of my mom and my father's family, um, and they're farmers for the most part. Mm-hmm. And so I was listening, kind of earshot away, at them talking about the youth. So. I was interested in seeing are they having trouble finding kids to come work because that's that's not the easiest job in the world yeah. being a farmer and yeah I mean they they've they can't get them away from the computers they can't get them away from the games it's just so and then we told them where we're from and we said don't worry we're from the good part and, <laughs> you're but, from but we had it uh, John Wayne's California <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna in, use that just yeah. in that moment we all three got hired. We're farmers in the yeah. next few months. We're going on going to the farm. Oh man, that But it's the conversations you have in these small towns. Yeah. And, and we're having a beer, of course. <laughs> with the bird yeah. you gotta That's go. That's one there. thing you gotta like about the, uh, everything in the Pacific Northwest. We saw that bar culture is alive and well. Yeah. Dive bars, fucking like it's just good old fashioned well bars. Everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I'll be honest. In the in the southern part of the United States, it's it's more like deemed like they 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 make bars where we're from. They confine them to these little like really? districts, 
And so, like, when you see, you know, like, where I live personally, like, there's no, there's not really a bar close by. I mean, there's restaurants that have bars in it. And that's why people would fuck me. Like, hey, why do you always want to go to Chili's? I'm like, <laughs> they all, there's a Chili's down the street from my house and they have a bar in it. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm from an area that doesn't. Don't you accept have Buffalo Wild Wings? That too. <laughs> <laughs> Did we go to Buffalo or some shit? <laughs> don't don't give them any more free pub. <laughs> yeah, but um, you, then when you go like especially when you go to the, like some of the Midwest towns like uh, you know St. Louis and um, you know Chicago and Milwaukee, like bar culture there, it's like it's not the bar is about is, is as much a part of the community right. as the church is in right. a sense. You know what I'm saying? That's why we stopped at Cheers when we were in Boston. Fuck yeah, y'all actually went to the bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We talked about that, didn't we? Like going by there. It's cool to go yeah. there. You have a beer, go downstairs. You get you know, get your picture in front of the cheer. You know, it's that's great. awesome. That's one of those. I I love the bar scene as much as anybody in our big trip. It seems like we've you know we've got a couple dudes, especially this one that had to work, had to edit the yeah. stuff at night. Right. I've got Big Will, Cody B, Kyle, Chance. There's three or four of us that every town like we're is that's our reward. We ride hard all day. Sometimes through shit. Sometimes they're not, but we're looking forward to getting to town, finding that bar, that little bar. And, man, there's nothing like rolling up in a town, like I said, with your buddies to some little bar, the buzz of who are these guys, the outsiders, right. and knowing you're there for one night, or for one night. It's such a modern-day just cowboy moving yeah. on, and it's one of my favorite things about the trip. Last year, the Northeast, they've got so many good old bars. Yeah. Uh, this year, we've hit a bunch of cool ones. Like I said, the northern – Northern California up through Washington coast. Yeah. And I love it, man. Oh, That's yeah. when I, there's a Sergio Simpson line. I've seen the whole damn world through, through the inside of a bar. And I think it's a play on a Navy, Navy sign saying about seeing the world from the bottom of the, of a glass. And I don't mind it, man. I don't mind. No, it. it's great. It's, 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 um, it's America. Yeah. 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 We were, uh, remember we, we rode up to Virginia city Yeah, and we came oh. through, uh, from East to West. So we were coming off the 50 up there. And we had to go through this like tight little canyon up the mountain to get to it. And we got out there. I was like, man, could you imagine what it would be like to be like a cowboy or just, just a dude on a horse? Like you're out there doing what you got to do. You got some coins now. There's fucking pussy up there. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bath. There's a whore. And there's whiskey. And that's all that matters. And then you get robbed like halfway there. <laughs> you're like, there's fuck. Friends. You're praying there's just not some bandits or some Indians like that last like five miles. Like you can see the town. Just please let me get to this bath, this whore, and this whiskey. For the love of God. Well, yeah. think about that. Yeah. How many days were they riding to get there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, these were little gold mine towns. That's how they sprung up, right? And it's like, so how did they, where was the map they used? Where was the compass? Uh, turn kind of left made, at the tree that's broken half, right? Dude. Or they <laughs> made their own what? map. <laughs> Follow the I mean, creek. There, there are oh. definitely explorers in this country that went out and mapped things yeah. and did stuff. But, I mean, back in the day, you're following kind of a wash line that yeah. you know this and you know that and you got like two stars mapped out and you know where the sun's going back and forth and hopefully it's not a cloudy day yeah. right well speaking of exploration we wrote a lot of the lewis and clark yeah. exp- uh, trail or whatever right, whatever right. it's called and it's something where I, all of a sudden I've, you know, obviously i know who they are but i'm seeing these signs and realizing oh shit i'm on something big that i didn't even realize right i can't wait to get home and actually yeah. research i was gonna look say at what that, the fuck right. i'm doing look at what i did yeah again. and do it again exactly you know because yeah. then you'll see stuff. oh that's yeah. why we like route 66 yeah you're, you're following this history path and you're going they made this highway and they rode it they drove this thing in some cars that you couldn't imagine driving yeah. you know back in the day but that's why we came up with the name we came up with mm-hmm I mean, we still have to take freeways to some places, right? You just you got to do it. We had a comment it's today. Too late in life. Yeah, we had a comment on uh, what episode two, where we, the whole premise of the trip was the Black Hills, filming the history of Deadwood, this and that. So it's not about the ride there. We're gonna film that when we go to Sturgis. We had a comment today. Seems like two lanes always on the highway in the interstate. So I, I pretty much responded like that. Like sometimes you got to get somewhere. You, know? you heard the words in that song Willie Nelson wrote, "The Highway." Mm-hmm. You rolled in on the on the four lanes that used to be the two lanes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the you know, like I, I think I was telling you guys earlier, like uh, the good thing about YouTube is you can do a deep dive, and somebody's taking the time to really divulge into the or dive into the history of everything. And I started going down the last year, and I couldn't quote anything for you, but 
just the history of the highways and the roads oh. in general, you know, you need and how we're not even really a hundred years old in highway structure yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like the fifties when they really started doing that. Like they yeah. uh, was eyes. Well, that's, I mean, if you think about it, that when we did route 66, we only, we did the whole thing, but last in January, we went and explored just a section. Yeah. And the railroads that used to be around. So steamers, right? Yeah. Not like the kind that uh, yeah, after yeah, lunch, I'd, but yeah. so th- they had to stop for to <laughs> fill up the fire wagon, the coal, yeah, and water, and so every so often it was these towns, and they built the commerce around the railroads. Yeah, just like how some of the commerce on interstates are built through the t- truck stops. Right. So we learned like that. that that doing this Route sixty six stuff that the trains were a huge part of it, like he's saying. But then we meet this guy, Jim Hinckley. Mm-hmm. You would have so much fun talking to this guy. He knows this is his book he wrote. We went to his dedication in Kingman. Mm-hmm. That guy knows everything about everything and every highway. And he's just a historian. Well, they put a in, including in more than Route 66. Yeah. You want to, any highway you he's talk about. He's still alive? About, he'll, yeah. He's, wow. He's not, what is he, like 65, 70? Yeah. Oh, still alive, huh? Yeah, he walks around the cowboy hat, his boot, and he puts his thumbs in his pocket, and he... And he tells you stuff, and he, you know he's he's one of those guys. What one of his quotes was? Uh, it's uh, sometimes it gets hard, and it's like pushing a wheelbarrow uphill with a bunch of fat people with in a it. flat tire. Yeah, you know, with a flat tire. You know, he's that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, great guy. you know, like uh, I've, I've said it so many times on this podcast, but when I looked into like uh, like where we're from, and a lot of the Midwest is like this. And it's actually different on the East Coast, but on the Midwest, like a lot of towns are spread thirty miles apart in every direction. And that was kind of like the growth of the railroads. And as those towns moved, or as the railroad progressed, the towns picked up from this town and went to the next one, yeah. made a hub, and then the next hub and hub and hub. Well, Seligman, when we were doing the thing, yeah. the lady said that the train used to go from Flagstaff or somewhere and to there. stop at Seligman because it would need more water, whatever mm-hmm. the stuff, and it would spend the night there. They'd get off the thing and they'd eat and they'd go to the basketball games and do and then another train from Kingman would be, and they'd switch. Yeah, you know. But they had a whole community. Yeah, around there, the trains. You know, and it it, and then once the trains kind kind of stopped, then I forty comes in. So back to your point about, we're not that old in the tooth with highways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And so all of a sudden they went from seeing two, three, four thousand cars a day on the route mm-hmm. to seeing no one. Yeah, they could lay in the middle of the road and not get hit. I mean, you could take. You can take two lanes and old beat up roads all the way across the country. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, it's just you got to work to find them, and you know. Well, when I first started, like crossing state lines, it it was kind of like, and I think some people this is kind of like the the introduction, like, oh man, I want to show all my friends on Facebook that I went to New Mexico today, right? right. I'm gonna take a picture of the sign, but, and I, I guess that's like the start, like you know whatever gets you you know going down the road, but. Like say if from Dallas to L.A. It's like if, if all of, if the only fixation is L.A. I mean you guys know how much badass shit is in between here and oh, there. Oh right, you yeah. have to find. You know it. what I mean? And it's not all going to be off the highway. And I, I'm guilty of this because sometimes I like bitch. Like I, I think I was bitching about something like we were coming through like Page, Arizona, and uh, they're like, "Hey, let's go see Horseshoe Bend." I'm like, "Is it off the fucking highway?" Because I'm not trying to hike or do any of that shit. And fortunately, it was. I, I still had to hike. You but had you know, for sure. Yeah, but it was one of those things. Like I get, you know, when you're in that mindset, like today we got 450 miles to our hotel, and man, I'm, I honestly, I want to get there. I need a break. Right. So you're like, well, we can do this divergence right here. We can go down and hit this spot, and be, you know, it's only going to add 50 miles on the trip, but we're going to be, um, we're going to be looking at now 8:30 when we show back up right. because it's. Obviously, we're all going to get the bikes. We're going to go check it out. We're going to do our uh, influences in the wild shit. And then we're going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a it's a job. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. This trip, this, this trip that we're on now that we're finishing up has probably been the most. It, we've taken the most time to go places instead of smashing through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've had so, like we had a couple long days to get kind of away from Dallas. But since then, like once we hit Mammoth, it was like 200 mile days for like a week. Like we're doing 150 today, we're doing 110 tomorrow, we're doing 230 tomorrow. Right, that's cool. But that, that's what's the beauty of it, because 
you can either smash them or you can kind of smell the flowers out there yeah, and yeah. spend time in mammoth and an extra half a day or day well some of the, some of those are two were mountain mountain road days where yeah, it may road. have been 200 but it but was, it still took well, it was 200 you. miles it took six hours seven right. hours to do especially yeah. by the time you throw a lunch spot in there right and a right gas stops and well, so and you you like us we we like Monument Valley. Oh, I love it. Like oh. it. Like we stayed in San Juan Inn. Yeah, we had a yeah. fucking blast out there. Awesome. Is that the place that Dude. that? Yeah. Oh, so sick. That yeah. fucking hotel setup is so dope. Did you ever stay at the San Juan Inn? Yeah, we've stayed there a few times. Yeah, dude. Love and, it. and yeah. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart all the time, but it's uh, they they do a good job there. Did you, uh, was the restaurant open? Oh, yeah, they opened it for us because we brought enough people. Okay. Yeah, because it's like if you don't have X amount of people, they, they you know, if if the hotel's not filled up with enough people, they won't open the yeah. restaurant. And they were doing good business the night we were yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've cool. had good luck there, and we last time we were there, we had the chef drinking whiskey or <laughs> tequila. Um, the San Juan, San Juan in, in. River Inn. Oh yeah, he was coming out. He he was actually pretty hammered. Some little dude, and he was coming out giving us shots and beers. And, <laughs> and then we found out he's a recovering alcoholic. <laughs> oh which yeah, he bad He influences. didn't tell us that. Yeah. Why it comes out hitting them with something. Like now, did you see any of the wild horses or or burros come across the we river? We saw some coyotes. I was about to ask you, did y'all go down that? Did you open that cattle gate? Yeah, and go yeah. down by the river. Hell so yeah. I, I think me, I I did it during daylight, and then later that night I talked Cody, Franz, and I think Kyle into doing it too. It was dark. We couldn't see anything. The first time we were there, we had wild horses swimming across the river. So oh, I saw shit. the horse. Like, I walked yeah. down, passed. You had to go over some stuff and then kept walking back. Yeah. And I did see, like, the horse and, I guess, the burrow shit. And I was yep. like, there's, there's critters out here somewhere. Yeah, crazy. I didn't see any of them. <laughs> we, we can't. The, the 2019 trip, when I actually first met Lance, uh, we camped at the campsite on the other side of Mount, uh, Monument Valley. And we had some wild horses just kind of walk up to us and... We were feeding them like you know, powdered Red donuts, and <laughs> shit like that. Powdered donuts make me go nuts. Oh yeah, there's, what was that? We're down at the river. What was yeah, that? Yeah. Half baked, where you like gave them all the snacks, and it was a yep. diabetic horse. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on out there? Oh, uh, they're getting they get lift up because they're taking the uh, ST out because it's they have to drag race the Dyna and the ST and see which one's faster. Okay, well. Yeah, well. Check so what is out. it a 117 versus a built 120? What's in the Dyna? You know what I I know he has his original 96 in there, but it huh. has cams. Gotcha. So I think the horsepower is pretty comparable. Yeah, the 117 stock is like it's like only like 80 or actually 94 horsepower. I think yeah, is so what this it. might smoke especially it. in California. The Dyna might the Dyna might do it. <laughs> It's got, going, it's got don't want to pause this. And go it's got like racing. toilet paper filled mufflers. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can. We can. Y'all want to pause this and go watch some racing? We're not live. Yeah, we can pause it if y'all have time. Yeah, it, you I should just be able to hit the pause power. button on there and it'll it'll lock it on. And, like, and uh, we are resumed racing. <laughs> the race was pushed back. <sighs> Easiest hundred dollar hole. Oh, Jaden was man, too fast. Easiest five hundred dollars I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Night. Oh yeah yeah. When you can and then have something here locals that we could stay at. Yeah. Huh? That makes it better. It does. Because we went three hours one night with you. Could have gone could have gone longer. Oh, Jesus. Gone longer. Well Rope City. The the studio has that effect on people. <laughs> yeah, like I said, when you get in the studio you can't you have no concept of time yeah. outside of it. So. It was that pickle beer. Yeah, purposely yeah. No, yeah. That got me no clocks in there. It's like a Vegas casino. We just want you in there as long as we can. Keep no <laughs> clocks. Keep pumping yeah. oxygen. Did you exactly. ever exactly. connect with Montucky? Uh, we did. So Sax, I, I don't know if y'all met Sax when y'all were there. He's uh, he was working for me a while. Uh, he was supposed to do what he did. Never got around to doing that. Um, I didn't mean to point at you all. Uh, You're not rude, rudely prospect like. Yeah. Well, no, he was going to come in and do some uh, video stuff. We were going to kind of kick that off and. But he had to learn. He he was coming in with the in, intention that he wanted to learn, so he was a big help with the podcast. Uh, but eventually, I just couldn't afford to kind of keep him on. Um, he actually reached out to Montucky for me, and they actually sent us like like ninety cans of beer. But it was such a hassle just to get like that that I'm like, it's not worth it. Like this this stuff is cheap enough. I can just go to the store and buy it. Real right, quick. right. You know Two I mean? three podcasts worth of beer, you know. Yeah, it's like ninety cans is like okay. So, 
I can do that in one podcast. We, yeah, we <laughs> set ninety cans every other week. You know. Yeah, and that's kind of what so what the deal is. That's what that's probably the hardest thing about. Like, I guess it. I guess it could be some form of entitlement on my end. Is when you see Montucky in the motorcycle scene being drunk, and I I'm not saying that I'm the. I am. If you you want some of this whack Arnold's, you got to come through me. That's a Dave Chappelle <laughs> joke back in the day. Um, if you have Mon, if you've drank Montucky, that that obviously I influenced you, or our our podcast and our, our group of friends did. But I know that we had a big part of helping making that thing something in the motorcycle industry. I mean, I I know that they see all these fucking people tagging Montucky and Fast Life Garage, but I just can't. I don't know what they need from us to get more traction. I mean, I, you, you, I don't know. I well, don't it's really hard. Know. I mean, I think you, it, I don't know how big Montucky is, but Luke Bryan has a beer called Two Lanes. For real? Yeah. And we reached out to them a hundred times. What a perfect fit. The song that's behind it is like right up our alley. Yeah. And we're not asking for money. Yeah. But we sit here with a, with a, big brand beer mm-hmm. and people see it every week why wouldn't you want montucky or something that's a little bit smaller brand two lane i started reaching out to some local breweries yeah that's kind of where i think we'll end up that's probably what's gonna have to happen with us and and that's the hope with like this big trip right here spending more time on the podcast making uh trying to solidify some of these relationships with brands so we can do more of that but i like montucky it's a it's a palatable beer for anybody's taste and um, we enjoyed it and it's and it's visually striking when it's on camera you know so that's kind of a good thing and i like as far as branding goes they're like uh they're like the pit viper of beer yeah it's like you know but well, I, that's I definitely is like you know our group of guys you know we got jive ass honky kyle who's <laughs> got this gnarly ass mullet mm-hmm. you know we got Jaden over here when he puts his pit vipers on he might body slam you. All he he can rip off his clothes. He's got a leotard underneath him. <laughs> hey, his brother. name changes from Jadon to. <laughs> I don't know where the camera is, but Anheuser Busch. I just want you to know, I'm pounding. I'm pounding your freedom. Let it ring cans now for weeks in a row. So my doors are always open. I'm, I've been a Budweiser kid. <laughs> <laughs> what a shameless plug back. that was. <laughs> I fuck, with Montucky. <laughs> I fuck with Montucky's too, but yeah, I just, I don't know, there's nothing uh, love. Budweiser's are everywhere. I'm not going out of my way to buy beer. You Boy, should know, Jaden's parents had Budweiser the night he was conceived. <laughs> He's been a Bud kid for his whole life. Uh, yeah. I came out of the womb with a I was a white my mom my dad. Felony, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, but See, no, now I, this is good because I was listening to something yesterday and it's like, you got to laugh and it's not the fake laugh it's the you know that belly where you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you i mean this, i the same thing i said on the podcast yesterday and i was like this shit is all supposed to be fun it's supposed to be fun yeah i mean there there's definitely going to be serious times but the serious times are supposed to be obstacles that you overcome as being a biker or being involved in motorcycles right i don't i didn't jump on my bike today to go be the policeman of culture the policeman of you know what you can wear whenever you're in this part of the country or whatever like i don't i, I just want to fucking have fun and ride bikes and and you know yeah. and, and if i wanted to take it more seriously there's enough there's a lot of easier routes i could have done as far as people local and just ease of and that's not talking shit on anybody but if i wanted to be serious and play tough guy all the time I could have done that too. Yeah. I don't want to. I like having fun with my friends. I yeah, like, why not? And, and uh, look, you say this side of the this, where you're at. I guess you're saying California, but I got told not to wear red and white three, bands. Three of here. us, <laughs> three of us have gray pants, black and gray yeah. vans, and black shirts, and two of us have uh, blue, blue jeans, blue jeans, and, and vans, and black shirts. So this is how we dress exactly you know they call that y'all get y'all get a chamber galen an echo chamber (laughs) (laughs) do y'all get those guys that like comment on your stuff and tell you what you should be wearing when you ride oh yes yeah Yeah, i mean we get get a lot of commentary about our shoes because we're we're typically vans yeah you know versus boots and they're probably right i know but they are right yeah 100 percent but we get the guys that are saying no one's gonna remember you're on you ride the line too much or oh you do the you guys oh the Sturgis videos we put up when we have the young guns with us, 
the comments. You guys have no riding etiquette. I never want to ride with you guys. You're all over the. We're like, look at the fucking film. There's no cars on the this two lane. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're having fun. Yeah. It's like Jesus. My, my, new, my new thing is now when people say something stupid, I say, "Have you mowed your lawn lately? Go look at it." <laughs> yeah. You know? My go. favorite one is the, the drinking. Like, when we're in Sturgis, maybe after 200 miles of 100 degree weather, we enjoy a beer, right? And we'll get comments in the video, and they saw maybe a couple of those stops. Well, that means in 16 hours, we had technically four beers, yeah. right? And they're, oh, you, I, I just saw in 30 minutes, you had fucking 65 beers. Like, well, well it took us all day to film this. Yeah. Think about how things are happening. I posted a picture I, at last year's camp out. I got some really good shots of my buddy, Justin, and his wife, my, machi my machinist, Justin, his wife, Rachel. He was doing a burnout on his FXR, and she's standing behind him with a wine bottle, pouring it in his mouth, right, on a dirt fucking patch at the camp out. Right. And so I posted it. And then Adam Sandoval posted it, too, to kind of help promote the camp out. His was worse. I had, like, two people said this. Promoting riding a drink and real good job. Right, right. And I, right. I just know when he was typing it, he was doing his head like this real good <laughs> fucking job, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> fucking cock, dude. And then, like, but when you go to Sandoval's, which Sandoval, you know, good friend, but he, he has a very a much older audience. And he's not as a dig, but he's definitely more on the, you know, freedom and fucking you know rah 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 america you know and so he gets a lot of people out there that are just like he, he gets the facebook crowd out let's just put it that way yeah, yeah you know what yeah, i mean yeah and those guys and, and facebook is is like those you know uh fortunately Every i don't karen in the world has a facebook <laughs> account yeah <laughs> hey lance's mom how old is she uh, uh she's gonna be 89 and she's been in facebook jail a ton of times <laughs> I mean, it's I that crowd. That was they going on. Yeah, I was like, hold on. Oh, Every shit. month, she'll say stuff that you're, I go, Mom, you can't say that because that's why you go to jail. You got a code word, so people don't know what you're saying. But you go on rants, and it's it's oh, that shit. long form content, you know. What was that commercial? That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. I unfriend you. This you is are my unfriended. Wall. Right, right. Oh, but man. she's hardcore. Yeah, she's like, I don't put up with shit, and I'm going to tell you if I don't like what you put. And she does. Which we is, need, we as need you get older, that. that's what happens. Yeah, <laughs> you know what the good thing is about, like, I guess when you have a, uh, right, you know, Josh? you have, oh yeah, the elderly, uh, the older folks that that have kind of seen life, they they kind of have the past to be like, hey, yeah, say it how it is, like, right. You earn you, that right. You earn that right. You've lived through some shit. You you know, you've already probably experienced some form of fashion. What we're we're experiencing. Like you probably got a fucking. I don't, I don't know if they've earned any right. I just think the filter changes. Yeah. We're we're walking down the, the oh, Grand <laughs> Canyon, right? Uh -huh. And this kid comes out and lights up a doob, a uh, cigarette, not a doobie doobie, but and then proceeds to spit on himself. He's spitting to the wind, and it whoops, it hit him right in the chest. And my buddy next to me says. <laughs> and that we were at the uh, shot you missed or something. <laughs> we were at the north rim of I'm the like, Grand dude, Canyon. Did you know you just ripped that dude a new <laughs> ass right in front of everyone. We need more of that. We need people to be not so sensitive. We need fun. Oh, it I was like such the days when you used to be able to laugh at people time, when they right? fail. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well that's that's what he did. Yeah. yeah. We were at the north rim of the Grand Canyon. And we're in, it's not like the other national parks where there's like millions of people there. Yeah. In the whole national park, there was like a handful of people. Have you been there? We were, that's the one we skipped because I was just talking you about You gotta it. go. We're on this gnarly plateau and within miles, there's just four people. It's just us three and like maybe a couple other photographers. This photographer is trying to hop the fence so he can get his tripod up and he fucking slips and Lance just goes, <laughs> fucking pussy. <laughs> We're the only ones out there, but he didn't say anything, but I'm like, you know what? I can't wait to be 61. <laughs> or Dude, two. That's the shit. Now, we do that now. Yeah. But Matt yeah. Laidlaw's at the, he went to the North Room. I weekend. saw that. Yeah. You got to yeah. go there because it's like, you've been to the South Room, right? Yeah. Right, a lot the of South, Asians. The South Room's like, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's tourists. North Room? Beautiful road in, and insane like road. Alpine, Some great Alpine riding. Meadows. Yeah, there's bison. There's, and you get to the rim, and it's like, so it goes more that way, but it's yeah. a thousand feet taller than the south. Mm -hmm. But the scene 
and you can see the south rim. Oh, you're yeah. looking right at it, but it's it's way. Oh, it's worth the, the that worth Vermilion it. Cliffs and all that up through there. It's a yeah. mind blow. We were freaking out getting our comms. We definitely want to go do more of that uh, that southwest Utah with the uh, the what was it? Where we go through the fuck? What was it called? Jordan Valley? No, that was no that, Escalante. Um, we didn't go there. That's so we did Zion, Zion but we need to go do Bryce Canyon, yeah. Bryce Canyon, and, yep. and Escalante, and all that shit. Bryce up, yeah, yeah. That shit was, that was a sleeper. We didn't. We were like, hey, you want to do this? Fuck it, we're here. I'm like, yeah, we went through. Like, oh, this is Ooh. getting good. Yeah. And then we went through that long ass tunnel. Like, so then it started zigzagging down. We're like, that's one yeah. of his Josh's favorite places yeah. to ride. Yeah, we've seen obviously some incredible stuff all over the country, but Zion is like every time through there. I don't know. Every time we end up going through there, it's almost twilight, maybe five, six, depending yeah. on the year. And you're coming through the tunnels. You catch some cool breeze on the other side. I can't even explain it. It's it's insane. Well, then you yeah. go and have a steak in Springdale. You know, first time Gail and I went into Zion, it was snowing. The very first mm-hmm. trip we ever took into there. Yeah. So you guys capture everything. everything. What he, to what he just said, uh, you almost can't explain it. Do you ever have things where you don't want to explain it, where you feel like this is just my like I'm I'm all about. I want everybody to see this. I want to entice you to come on and do it. But man, there's certain things where I'm glad I don't have my phone out, and I'm like, this is just for me. This no, is we, we have those. There's, a, and I, I don't know. Sorry, those little. No, we science, always. Science, no, but to, I, understand what I, you're I love them, yeah. and that's I don't know. That's one of the perks of. But I, I think I think consciously we always are filming. Yeah, yeah. And whether we like it or not, there's things that we've seen that people rarely have seen. We saw a rare flat rainbow up at Lake Tahoe. Like we were all filming, and all of a sudden it, it was just this really weird kind of levels of the sky, the clouds, the water, and all of a sudden we saw this just rainbow that was linear. We're like, what the it hell? It was like is the that? Nor- Northern Lights. So to your point right there, one it was five o'clock one winter night. We came in from the top of the Grand Canyon, like the West Rim, and we're on the rim of the Grand Canyon in a blizzard. There's snow everywhere. There's cars off the side of the road. There's a couple ice patches. Him and I are rolling. We know we got to get to Williams. It's getting dark. You see the clouds breaking open. There's sun dropping into the canyon. There's like rainbow. There's all this stuff going on. And we were in such a, we got to get over there. We had no cameras. And we were in that moment. And we were like, holy shit, did you see what we did? But we could not We had share cameras. That. We yeah. just couldn't yeah. get our hand off the bars. Other than yeah. me telling you it right now. Yeah. No. You know. No, but yeah, it's... Sense. There's times where, yeah, it's... I could stop and fumble and do this, but it's... You know what? I'd rather just... Yeah. Well, even, even if we soak filmed this it, in, this is mine. Nobody would have else been gets this. epic. Yeah. But we didn't. Even last year, um, we were headed... We thought we were going to get a, a motel in Hanksville, and they were sold out, so oh, we had yeah. to head to Tory. And we stopped, and I, there's deer and shit everywhere. But we oh, stopped fuck. Yep. just outside of Bryce. But it's pit, pitch black. Pitch black, and we just laid on the cement and watched the lights and saw the light show, the Milky Way. Because out here, you don't get that as much yeah. because of all the light pollution. Yeah. But we just, we, like, I don't want to seem weird, but three no, of yeah. us are laying on the ground just going, oh. holy shit. Then and mind you, he had never seen a satellite go across yeah. the sky. Well, mind you, probably in the sketchiest spot ever, on the blind yeah. corner in open range, <laughs> on a two-lane road, just on a tiny little pullout. Like, if some dude's <laughs> like, I need to pull over and get some sleep, we're dead. it'd be tough meat. But, but then we end up in covered wagons. Yeah. And we that each had was, our own covered wagon with Yeah, I saw that yeah. video. Uh, oh, my God. And what was a trip for me was I had never been to uh, – if when we leave Tory and hook the left, remember we went back to go see it the next morning. What was right. that? Yeah, up into Bryce, into Bryce. But there's a name for that. Uh, what was that? We went back in. I'm forgetting the name, but we rode through there at night, and I thought we were in we open plain. Back. What was it I night? thought there was nothing to the sides of us, and I'd catch these weird kind of beams of light, not knowing what it was. Little did I know, we're in this massive valley with these towering rocks on both sides of us. So yeah. we went back through the other day and saw it, and it was just. Just a trip. That's gnarly. So I don't know what it's called. When we go on a trip, oh, okay, we're gonna go do. We're gonna go to your camp out. Let's say mm-hmm. we know where it's gonna be and we know the road we're taking. But I guarantee, a hundred percent of the time, we're fucking over here, over here. Yeah. There was a little yeah. detour. Now we're. That's why this stuff happens, and we get to. See well, it's all just this like the last shit. trip we were on. We did. We did. Uh, went to Deadwood 
and Sturgis, um, 3,600 miles in six days, really, because we were out eight, but we filmed two days where we didn't really ride. Um, but Denver was getting a shitload of snow. We were headed up the I going to go up to I seventy, and it's like we we knew we could get to St. George. Yeah. First night, so we got that plan. The wives had a layover. The goal was to pick them up in Denver, but they had a layover in Salt Lake, and we're like, stay, let's go up to there. Salt Lake, yeah. and then we'll hit the eighty and go across, and we'll try to stay out of the snow, which we did until we got into South Dakota yeah. again when it snowed on us. And it was this heavy snow. It wasn't. It's like. You know, if you're from Utah or other places, it's a little bit lighter. But this was a really heavy, like wet, wet yeah. slush, and you you wipe off, and you're back on it. You just it yeah. was yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It was we gnarly. Did, you know, now with where our channel is, no matter where we go, what gas station, what restaurant, someone's going to walk up, or a few people are going to walk up and say, "We know you guys." Yeah. So we've been on the free. We've been on like the I-10 outside of Phoenix, heading to Tucson. And we're going to go to Mount Lemmon and. We see bikes go by on the other side of the road. Next thing you know, Galen gets a DM. Hey, I just passed you guys in the free. You got oh, yeah. to check out Tortilla Flat, blah, blah. Next thing you know, we're, we get off and we're at the Goldfield Ghost Town and now Tortilla Flats. We meet the owner of Tortilla Flats, the town, the owner. He's sitting at the bar. He comes over to talk to us. He has a Harley. He rides back to town with us. We go to a restaurant he owns in town, the Union. Yeah. I mean... I think I remember that one too. I remember it's like how that all one. this stuff happens. Wasn't that on the Texas run? When y'all no, were coming we were out? No, we that was we that was just weird. an Arizona thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're trying to head to Mount Lemmon like and that. we didn't get there at all. <laughs> so we came back a year <laughs> next year and did it again. You know. Well, I feel like if y'all were to come to the camp out, like there's there, a, a, I mean, I know you've ridden through Oklahoma before doing the sixty six, but. All the southern part of Oklahoma is pretty hilly. And yeah. then on the eastern side, it gets pretty – our version of mountains. So is it near Ponca City? Uh, I'd have to look at the thing. But it's all, like, south. Like, um, down towards Lawton, which is where my daughter lives, there's uh, the – they call it, um, fuck, Wichita Mountains. And so that's where, like, uh, Quanta Parker, y'all yeah, know who he is? So that's where his, like, house is. He's the Comanche that's the son of – uh, Cynthia Ann Parker that was stole by the in, by the Comanches and raised and came back to white civilization didn't want it went back to in, you know what I mean great stories all the Comanche shit is right there in like where we are in Dallas up into pretty much up to Wichita and in and, and, uh, Kansas and over towards like Santa Fe it's all this big area called the Comancheria and it's fucking like when you start riding through it after you've heard read the books or something like that you're like Empire of the Summer Moon dude you're just like all these towns you're going through, it's like these are guys that came here and settled these towns, and you know what I'm saying. And and then there's yeah. all these stories of how they had to fight off the Indians and blah blah blah. Right. It's awesome shit. But yeah, a lot of that cult, a lot of that history is in southern Oklahoma. Wow. And then when you get to where we do our camp out, that's more the Geronimo area where he was kind of more famous is where our, our camp out is, and um, all those little like mountain ridges. Was they the go Washington into a, mountains like QUA. The ones that we're at, I'm not sure what they're called, but they all bleed into Arkansas, and Arkansas's got a lot of yeah, great I've heard shit. Arkansas's yeah, got you can some Google good the Talamina yeah. Byway. Tell yeah, Talamina uh, Parkway is. Parkway. Uh, <coughs> it, so y'all have heard the stories of uh, Mina, Arkansas, right? Like mm-hmm. Barry Seal, the cocaine, and all that shit. So the, one of the Tom Cruise's best movies that's, ever. That's the, yeah, the yeah, American. Uh, what the hell was Fuck, it called? it's some American, though. I know yeah. that. Someone on the pocket is like, it's fucking this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, that Barry Seal thing, is. it all took place in Mena, Arkansas, where he was, like, running cocaine for CIA. Yeah. And it's a great flick. One of the best, like, one of the most banks, like, some of the most, uh, there's some weird kind of thing right there. But then Hot Springs, Arkansas, is where all the fucking mob stuff was from the New York, where you have, like, there's this, I haven't been there yet, but I've, all the homies have told me stories. There's all these like mob style like tunnels through it and really? fucking bathhouses and shit like that and wild stuff. So there's lots of cool shit in that area. But the thing about south southeastern Oklahoma is there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, the towns haven't quite turned into like how Deadwood is, right? All right. They're like more run down. Like there's just not a lot of sightseeing there. You know what I'm saying? 
so it is just the roads and the campgrounds and right. shit like that but people come out man I, I feel like it it would be a it'd be an awesome fucking video for you guys you got a fifth wheeler or something we no can? we actually we, we we can do that we can uh we can have a they what we do what some people do is they'll have a rv just delivered to the site yeah. and then you camp in the rv and then they come pick it up afterwards does he have cabins there he does but they're booked out they're, so. yeah they're probably already booked and yeah, yeah call the call the campsite ask who who they recommend and there's an rv company that'll thousand percent have it out there when you when you need it pick it up after you're done and you're you're glamping baby you're good yeah well, and that's good out there. rubs wanna, need if that if you want a yeah. hammock if you want a tent camp there's still there's showers there's bathrooms it's right. not it's not primitive at all there's food trucks you're not going to go hungry there's food options a 10 minute ride less than 10 minute ride into town yeah the next little town over there's no cops it's it's insane man it's the funnest thing yeah, over a thousand people at this year's really wow yeah there might be more this time and there better be what y'all were saying about make if y'all were to come about doing you know we're doing this we're doing that we're doing this we're doing that that's how a lot of people consume it, and that's how I would almost recommend if you're coming from over a or thousand miles. Or just fly miles, to fucking Dallas and then ride over there with us. Yeah, don't yeah, necessarily yeah. <laughs> make it – you don't have to make it your destination event. If you want to make it part of your trip, do it. And Dip hang out in for and a day. Out. Hang out for a day yeah. and a half. You don't have to stay for three days like like all of us that are two hours away. But, man – Is that – you guys are that's two hours? It? Yeah, well, we're 200 miles, so about two and a half. The, yeah. uh, the amount of people that came this year from over a thousand miles away – you know, a couple of years ago we had dudes from Boston. This year, it, all four, all corners of the country. I mean, literally, we had oh. California, Florida, Washington, New York, Boston. I mean, personally, blew my fucking mind on how how far so many different people came from. Right. Wow. And well, the good thing is, like, when people, you know, and I've said it, we've said it so much on the podcast. I'm sorry, but you're rewarded by people being stoked that you came and you rode there because just about everybody earned that trip like right sturgis you know don't be wrong that's the mecca of events right of motorcycling but there's a lot of people that trailer to sturgis there's a lot of yeah. other and and hey i get it no no hard feelings there right but a lot of people that come to our camp out are like i want to be one of the guys that rode to the camp out well there's a there's a difference too like sturgis is this major event where you've got a little bit more of a probably a cherished event that's smaller where people can actually get to know each other oh, from yeah. year to year. Yeah. Oh, you're here again. Like, you know. Oh, a lot like, of that. That's yeah. how Borrelia and those guys kind of – I wouldn't say that's how they started getting on the map at all, but that's that's what I found out about them because they came to the camp out and they leaned into it. They, right. they you know, they made themselves known. They And then we see them in Milwaukee right after that. And then I guess they did the Bagger Racing League. And then I when when did y'all meet those guys? Uh, we met them the first year we went to the, we started the channel in Sturgis. They okay. actually were following us, and they came up. We were at a Bell Brawl. <coughs> there you go. And they came Can't up and them. said, "Hey, we follow you guys." And we're like, "Whoa!" Yeah, they're great. They're great dudes. They are. His yeah. brother came out this year and really leaned into the camp out. They brought some other dude. Uh, I don't remember his name was, but he he brought another guy from Colorado. The guy that was walking around the speedo the whole time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have got some pictures of the dude because he's trying. He was trying to get on the shirt for next year. Because what we do is we'll try to take all the pictures from the camp out and we'll make a new shirt. And some of the wild shit will be on the shirt. Gotcha. So the the thing about the camp out is kind of what we were talking about with lunch as far as the it's yeah. There's dudes that do wheelies and stuff, but what we do, what we all really really fuck with the traveling, the relationships, the camp out is kind of like the. Uh, Melting pot, maybe? Of that, yes. Everybody, all these guys that are we do team, a lot of stuff like team thrash and all this stuff, they're there. And it's it's not it's not the ass whooping like a Surgis is. Surgis, you have to wade through so much stuff. You may be able to run into you. I may be able to see you if I'm lucky, maybe at the Bell Brawl. The camp out, it's different. It's yeah. And like I said, it's not to the point where for the brands, you're like, oh, i got to put up with it. Everybody's cool, man. Everybody yeah. cool. They stay in their lane, and it's just – the perfect melting pot of this is team traveling team what we do it's it's just the antithesis of that man it's, yeah it's the best i did have an older guy t- tell me he goes yeah you know back in the day if we saw a guy pull up to sturgis and park his trailer and get his bike off we'd probably beat him up <laughs> <laughs> people yeah, it's, yeah they were hardcore back then man so have you done 
Deadwood or Sturgis without the rally? I haven't yet. That's one you of gotta, those things. You gotta go check I definitely that want out. to. Yeah. I mean, Sturgis is like a ghost town. Yeah, I figured There's it would be, but there. Deadwood seems like more of a tourist destination. They've got, for they've got no. snowmobiling, they've got ski resort, they've got fishing, they've got yeah. side by side. They've, so it is more of a well, Deadwood's, but it's like, got that Western history. Yeah, it's got Dead, that hey, you know. Yeah, Deadwood life. has the history of all the gold rush stuff, and you know, of course, um, Calamity Jane yeah. and, and Wild, and Bill, Wild Bill. But I mean, yeah. you have the roads open to yourself. Yeah, so like, we you go to Rushmore, you go into Keystone. We didn't get onto the 16A because we had a we had to do a, a, a interview with someone at the end of the day. But uh, we went through needles and all that's just wide open. Yeah. So we went. We interviewed uh, Scott Jacob. He's an artist. He's one Harley of the artist. Uh, artist that was commissioned by Harley. He can do. He's licensed to do whatever he wants. Yeah. But he's made it worldwide. He's very. Famous, but he's one that has one of the galleries at one of the yep. casinos or something like that. He has a gallery on Deadwood, nice on the main street there. But he took us in there, we did an interview with him. And uh, what's the guy's name who killed Wild Bill? Nobody needs to know his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he, he's a school shooter. He was in, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was in, Whoa. spread the name, the building that his art gallery is in. That's where they caught him. Oh, that's where it was? Yeah, so they caught him in the corner of the building, and that took him out, trial, hung him, that kind of thing. Well, this guy, Scott Jacob, has bikes, his favorite old bikes, up on top of a couple of dressing rooms. You know, 20s, 30s, lean, old bikes. nice, kickstand, not strapped down, but leaned against, so if they did fall, they'd hit the... Well, he's got a security camera of the bike in the corner where the guy got taken out, middle of the night, Boom! Off the thing into the ground. Wow. I think it's John McCall, isn't it? Ja- Jack, Jack McCall. McCall. The Jack trial McCall. of Jack McCall. So but they're thinking the town's thinking Jack McCall pushed that bike off. So, Damn. but it, it's one of his favorite yeah. prized possessions. In the in the footage, the bike you see it come down, hits and bounces and lands back up on the kickstand. But dented some shit. But it didn't. But how? Like did, how, physics wise, it didn't make any sense on no how way. it fell down that way. I don't so know, was it was it Jack McCall? <laughs> Could have been Jack. <laughs> or Good someone that Jack. was mad at Jack McCall. <laughs> uh-huh. But if you get a chance, you got to get up there. Oh, I definitely that. want it's to. It's such sure. great writing. Yeah. And we were lucky the Boar's Nest happened to open the earliest they've ever opened, and it was that weekend when we were running through. Yeah. I feel like uh, Sturgis, you know, Sturgis's history is the rally, but Deadwood's history is – it predates the rally, so, so you know another sixty years, I believe. I'm like driving a notepad. I'm, I need to write on there. <laughs> Fuck up the ghost of Jack McCall. <laughs> Next time I'm in Body Deadwood, slam what, oh, what, he's got it coming. What glasses does he wear yep. when he gets really angry? Pit vipers. <laughs> pit vipers. Yep. Yeah. I've never owned a pit, pair of pit vipers. What are those ones you got? The heat, the waves? heat waves. Yeah, yeah heat waves. Oh, heat wave. Yeah. But yeah, ah, man. Yeah. <laughs> brother. Come on, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Did he jump from the top ring? Uh, he climbs the ladder. It, yeah, it he was necessary. He climbs the ladder. <laughs> we the some, belt's hanging. We were somewhere. He's going to get the belt. Oh, it might have been Randy Savage. It might Savage. have been Missoula, but it was, we were outnumbered in like frat boy looking guy. And there was one guy where, I think I told Cody, I was like, you see the lumberjack over there? Just this, just massive dude and he's like huh i go that's lumberjack i go i'll go top you go middle kyle you get the bottom we're chopping that dude that down like a tree and all the other guys will scatter if we have to <laughs> and hell a couple bars after that we were somewhere and i did the count i go hey we're just so you know it's a 10 to 4 ratio and he, cody without miss amigos we're good <laughs> <laughs> well, i miss you big wheel yeah yeah cody's uh that dude's a he's a terminator of getting drunk and going to bars. Really, <laughs> he really is. If you think about it, every time we go to, he's like on Google. There's a bar two miles from here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got the dudes as we're getting in town looking for the hotels. Cody's on his phone looking for the bar, and by the time we're checked in, he knows where we're going to drink. He's yeah. got he's got a spot or two laid out. And All right, big just, wheel. Oh, dude, we were coming. We, we were staying in Spokane. And uh, one of the homies, um, Denver Jones, right? Yeah. He stayed. Uh, he he kind of tagged along, and he showed us like, oh, when you go to Post Falls, right over the border, there's this bar there called uh, Cruisers. Cruisers. And he and so we're thinking of Strokers. You guys have been to Strokers, like yeah. our yeah. kind of biker bar. Yeah. 
And so there's like cruisers and it's like a biker bar and you can ride right through the bar and you literally could ride right like there's a like a door and a door and you could ride right through the center of it. It's v- very gimmicky. It's gimmicky, yes, yeah, but you can you take people lean into it for sure. Bar. Wasn't there a video where someone did a burnout in the bar? That's what they're that, that, that was that was down south camp. That was the down south camp out, which is a buddy of ours that put it on. And uh that thing's still going viral there's pending litigation day. we can't talk much about it yeah. thank you lance <laughs> but uh at, at, at cruisers at cruisers they did have a sign in the bar saying if you do a burnout in the bar you pay that month's rent or ah. the next month's rent so yeah. nobody did it but it's you know it's just what two big overhead doors and yeah big, right yeah you drive right through it and you park in the parking lot kind of so yeah. it's just but fun. gimmicky yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah gimmicky it was cool though there was there was a bachelorette party going on there while we were there sure enough we, handful uh, of bikes there uh, a couple cool ones couple you know ducatis things like that and then but that whole town was full of bars so it was like there we went to another bar and then we went to this more happening bar where we were kind of the older guys there and uh it was it was a great time we, I, ate, we ate in a bar in oklahoma on when we were doing route 66 there was nowhere around to eat we found this back alley bar, burgers and beer. And yeah. There was locals in there just. And broads. And smoking. <laughs> there you go. Oh, they looked at us like, who are these city slickers? But they were cool. Yeah, they I were I like cool. that too, though. I like that too. Yeah. yeah. Odd man out. Uh, when y'all, yeah, so we stay at the Big Texan on this trip. Oh, Like, okay. we all we all actually linked up there. like In one of those. Yeah, in the little cabins next, to, or like the hotel they have yeah. right now. Dude, not bad food. We tried to do that. It was gimmicky. Was Yachting, okay. Yeah, it was. It wasn't we the best thing I've ever had in my no. life, but it also wasn't the most expensive either. So I was no. like, okay, that's cool. Right. You know, we had a fight there. I remember <laughs> <laughs> fucking brawling. <laughs> Jesus, that's the Christ. B-roll that we want to see, man. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> you saw a piece of it. We'll let it out the vault someday. Kalen killed a guy. <laughs> Stabbed him with the lance. <laughs> <laughs> Not that lance. <laughs> so what the hell are you I doing? I have a lance. Well, I don't know you what I'm doing. 7,000 miles, right? Yeah. So the first half of the trip is just the boys yeah, enjoying. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a... You know, I've tried to do these podcasts on the trip, like, with all the guys, and it's, it's, just, it's kind of unfair. Right. You know, because... The first time we went on this trip, we came to L.A., we were staying in one place for three days. So I was like, okay, I can go do a podcast with somebody. They're, I'm not going to miss anything. I'm not, like, making them sit on the curb out there while we're doing a podcast. But last year, you know, we went to – or when we went to um, Yellowstone, you know, I didn't do any podcast. And then last year when we did uh, Maine, I didn't do any podcast. But this year I was like, this is our biggest trip that we would have been gone a long – uh, uh, on the road so we were gonna uh, essentially be gone for almost three weeks originally and i was like well shit i'm gonna get back home on the 20th we're leaving on the first i get home on the 20th well i might as well just dip Stay. back to california yeah. and do some podcasts out here because i was planning on coming here after sturgis but then after sturgis there's still people in sturgis right so it, it's kind of a i wouldn't like to call it a sacrifice but i'm just sacrificing the rest of june so that right. I can stay in, like in at work in right. July and August. But I mean, could I? I don't know how you're set up other than being at your studio. Could you do these remote? What do you mean? Could we? Could you be in Texas and we're doing this? I right could, now? but this doesn't this feel better? I was just yeah. going to say that. Uh, lives with live. Our, our so yeah. so you're committed to your channel. Yeah, I mean, I'm committed to you, it. I, you were out writing additional. You drug this guy behind you. Yeah, Jaden. Yeah. He volunteered. Because you get so I much. I like, Come on, man. So much better interaction when we're sitting in a room together. At the end of the day, the content, I mean, just like the way you guys have upped the quality of the video, made it more cinematic, you know, the quality of a conversation is, you know, in person. It's yeah. when you change the lighting to make it this way. Now it's way better. With, the, with those fucking bright lights on, this would have been an interview, dude. I'd have been like trying to get a job here or something. <laughs> you know, we but. Did a podcast with. Uh, Jason from Deadwood Cycles, nice. right at his counter. Yeah, Short it was perfect. Clothes. But th- that's the vibe, yeah. man. Like you know, it, as cliche as it's going to become, if it hasn't already, you know, the podcast thing, especially in the motorcycle world, is about like we're hanging out, and then there's microphones just happen to be here. Right. 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 There was a great picture of us in Missoula that, fortunately, another homie that was there with us grabbed my camera, and said, "Hey, I'll take some pictures of you guys." We were all just. Sitting around my bike, with beers in our hands. I didn't have one. Uh, beers in our hands, 
and just talking, just shooting the shit, joking at each other, you know, making each other laugh, talking about the bar, talking about the the, the town, the scene, just the type of shit that maybe it's interesting, maybe it's not. We don't fucking know. We'll see where this goes. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's fun. Yeah. You know? Well, we've done our YouTube lives, and it's so much better to have people in studio with us. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've, we've used this other service that's out there, and it at first there were delays and it's just it's so much better to have a, a physical work. body in there's no you're trying to talk over each other here it's like having a blast having a couple beers yeah like i was I, I even said this yesterday is like when you get to see someone's face while they're talking then you their eyes can tell you their seriousness right, right. you know like if you know i can put like not not on purpose but naturally i all right, Jason's about to make a joke because the way his face looks right now. You know what I mean? Jason's get, he's going to lie right now. Yeah. He's fucking, you can he always fucking face. scratches his ear when he does that, you know? But that's what makes... Should we go check on the race? A little po- poker. Oh, that, is that what that bike is? I'm wondering, like, it's getting... It's been way past 20 minutes. Well, it probably took him 30 to get it on there. <laughs> Should so we where, take are we at, where are we at on this? We're at 112. I, I need more out of you guys after this. So. All right. Well, let's take a little break and we'll Pause come it right up. back to it. Another ad break. Here we go. <laughs> We're just up. So we just fucking watched the race. <laughs> yeah. What the hell so did we just see? Does that happen during your normal uh, podcast? Uh, no. Um, we don't race in Texas. Uh, we... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we we you never just ride fast. No, we don't even do that. No, <laughs> really? We uh, I've obey the law. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've ridden with you. We make sure that we also use our turn signals and hand signals uh-huh. in conjunction. That way, for the uh, you know light impaired individuals behind us, they can see the hand motions. So and you wear safety glasses. We wear safety glasses under our helmet just to make sure that there's not an extra glare coming through because we just we just don't want to be a nuisance. We right. just want to be uh, a pleasant group of motorcyclists uh just you know sharing the road with the rest of the folks well so. bud baby just joined us there you go. Uh, he was out using the urinal i think <laughs> and i said hey bud baby if you want a white cloud go for it and he's like what are you calling me so i think the heat waves are coming on yeah, a little so bit later <laughs> was yeah. it bud or butt bud oh from bud remember your parents conceived oh, you yeah, under yeah, budweiser yeah. call me butt baby oh. i was like First of all, I don't think you can say that in this state. Second of all, I take offense to that, sir. <laughs> Holy crap. And then you're, so we as a, our group, we have like, a, we give ourselves like, if we were born in the 60s or 70s, what would our 80s hardcore biker names be? I wouldn't say we gave it. We, it was a joking, like a, just shooting the shit, fucking around with each yeah. other. It wasn't like we sat around like, hey, we need, we need to sign each other biker names tonight. No, it wasn't like we gave them to each other. Right, well, was, before yeah. we continue, everyone needs to know that Dino won. Okay. Oh, yeah. Dino did win. All well, right. the ST did win a couple trips. Yes, but, you know, the overall test. You'll check that out at some point. If you from the cops, would you be on the Dino or the ST? I'm on the Dino all day long. <laughs> I would stop and pull over. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Texas. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm All right, so back to your hardcore biker game. Names. So... You're you you had something I can't pronounce. Is your hardcore biker name Tony Montana? No, you can't. That's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> Santorini Respatsats. Yeah, I can't even. That uh, yeah. when I yelled that across the bar to get help at this fuck when I just broke the 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 cue stick over my yes. knee and I'm like you just yell Santorini when I when I leave, it needs to be a little bit more dragon. Like, come on. It needs to be a little bit more like a wrestler name. <laughs> His is bulldozer. Bull- there you there go, bulldozer. You go. Dude, I that's love what it. we're talking about. Perfect. <laughs> My nickname's Bonesaw. 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 Yeah. Damn, Does it I'm sound like, like that? It feels good when you say that. My name's Maverick. <laughs> Maverick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Calm down, Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say Top Gun anymore. It's Maverick. Oh, it's Maverick. Mm-hmm. That is Maverick. It is. They did Maverick. call it. Is that Maverick. true deal? I don't know what. This did y'all watch the movie yet? Yes. Nope. I loved it. Did y'all? It's love great. It? Did it feel good to watch an American movie again? Yeah. <laughs> That's why well, was, some, that's someone why actually good. came into the studio and said, "Hey, this is uh, I'm pretty impressed by this." And and I heard an interview with Tom, not that he's the yeah, spokesman for America, but he wanted to make sure that the technology was right before they filmed again. Mm-hmm. Because of the shots they got were sick. They were. But it it did throw back to kind of that, you know, badass, tough 
like a leader we're going to play football on the beach instead of volleyball that they played in the first movie but it was i i was pretty impressed with it yeah i walked we away need with masculine stuff i walked away with an american heart on <laughs> did they show masculinity <laughs> I just walked out of the theater. I was like, "Fuck it, they ain't a, I'm from here." You're right. You're like Maverick, Maverick. No, nah, it was a good movie. It, it felt good. You know, I've I've been a big fan of like Marvel movies, and at first I loved them. They've kind of gotten a little bit on the uh, woke side lately, and uh, I've kind of lost that hero kind of feeling because now I'm rooting for people that can't even beat me in an arm wrestling match. Marvel right. Marvel chicks Don't with talk dicks about Big Bud that way. <laughs> <laughs> they need to choke on their woke. Yeah, they do. But I mean, like that movie was a breath of fresh air. I feel like it's that's the kind of shit you need that to spark, so that all the other followers in Hollywood will kind of follow suit. Like, oh, I guess are we doing America again? Is that what we're back on? Like, fuck yeah. it, let's line up some more biker movies. Let's do some, right? You know, let's do a let's do a Harley and the Marble Man too. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. That's what I'm ready for is the next badass motorcycle movie, whether it's. A Terminator 2 where there's just a cool motorcycle in it but yeah give me something yeah because or what was it one of the Captain Americas where yeah was it the Winter Soldier he like spun a Harley around I was like pretty well, we're, pretty sick we're big fans of Wild Hogs yeah dude me <laughs> yeah, too yeah but that's all I mean you've seen that I want something new I want I want a new well if you want something new you head over to Tulane Life you watch that YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> oh you gotta you gotta check it out though I mean we have some interviews coming up in Deadwood that are insane they're historians they're restaurant owners and it was what was really cool is they don't have the time during the rally to spend much time with you. Yeah, yeah. Doing but those it interviews. was such a nice. Everyone embraced us. I mean, it was that whole kind of vibe where you're in, hearing stories and getting information, and it just. And you know it. what's cool about that? Excuse me. Uh, you just said you liked it here, like watching the race and the stuff. You said you liked the whole family vibe. Of, yeah. of the 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 brands here. Mm -hmm. So. When you're in small towns and you're doing it, whether it's in Deadwood or whatever, you see so many family operations and yeah. generations that have still been there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I can't imagine. Um, that's probably I mean, though, like that. That's a small knit community there. It's almost like it's own little HOA yeah. or some it, shit like right. that. You For know? sure. I mean, the girls that we interviewed, uh, Louie and her sister. They grew up in Saloon 10, and that is actually also a casino. Mm -hmm. So they were back washing the glasses, pouring beer. Uh, she, who was on the table, on the blackjack table for like 30 years? Like just, so they yeah. grew up through the whole. And I wish I knew that. My neighbor, Amy, who's from there, Yeah, she said that she grew up in Saloon 10. That's where she hung out as a kid. Wow. So wow. she probably knows them, and we could add. Probably. That, you know. Yeah, it's when they brought you all in and gave you the family experience. Like, oh, yeah. hey, let's, yeah. this is what it's about. Well, What's I got to tell you, what you see on everywhere you go, that's see, that's the best. That's the you should almost almost say that like three more times because that's and the, that's why we love the country exactly. travel around. That's, what what, that's what, what you'll see about. on the drop is different than how they came in. Oh yeah, and I got to tell you how they came in. I wish we could have captured some right. of that. I did. I got some of it. Because they Before were the they were on fire and it was like they as soon as the camera coke? turned on though they they kind of just went right into their because they've done this for a while yeah but they were hardcore fun oh yeah I like the ones that you say they're hey, media trained yeah hey, can, you want to talk you want to talk about your story you can tell us about your bar and this and that and they're oh no 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 I'm terrible on camera I'm not good at this I hate doing it we go okay. We're live. Go ahead. And they turn out to be like, yeah. what are you talking about? You're, You're the gym. best person a, ever. A you know? GM, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Like, I, I guess that's probably a great thing if you're – I mean, you definitely want – anytime you have somebody on the podcast or on camera, I can imagine you guys are the same boat, is you want someone that's going to – they can tell their story very good, as good as possible, right? Yeah. Sometimes you can help them out with some like, oh, so what – and then what happened? And so tell me more about this. And they'll sometimes go a deeper dive down like that one particular area of their story. But, man, like when you see people that like that, who they really are on camera, yeah, yeah. it's like, dude, dude, be that. 
Right. And when they match y'all's enthusiasm. Right. I mean, just it it comes out of you guys anyways, just being there. Right. So when you meet up with the people that they have already, but this is a business they've done for 30 years, this is their family business. Shit, dude, that's... They want to share it with you. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. Well, not not to plug the channel again, but if you look at... This is your podcast, dude. If you look at the series with Aaron Baker... Um, this was a ride that we decided to plan with this guy. Um, Is that the one on the trike? On yeah. the trike. Yeah. And this guy built a heritage soft tail, uh, put some big old My wheels brother. on it. Huh? My brother. Yes, sir. I love him so much. I mean, and and we're, we're planning a ride, and he hasn't ridden that far. So it's a 700-mile loop, but it's not that many days. But to watch him actually ride that trike where he straps his hand onto – he Velcros his hand – and then straps it onto the throttle, and he whiskey elbows to get the get the the juice going, wow. and to watch him bounce. And this is a guy that <laughs> can't walk that well. Uh, he's bouncing around, gets back on the trike, and then to take him up to his hometown and listen to his story and his mother's story, and he had his child with him and his wife. This became it sounds like a tearjerker it, already. It really was. It, it became more of a spiritual journey, which I mean, we've yeah. been on like looking at the stars at night, but to watch this guy actually, and we were in some wild winds one day, and he was just tucked in behind the windshield, and you'd look at him in a three quarter, and he'd just smile at you. Like it's like, it's like he was a professional motocross racer. Yeah, mm-hmm. broke his neck. Quadriplegic. But then you see him on the strike, and like I say, it's got these huge tires. I'm on a trike, and he's telling me how the best way to ride a trike is. I learned a little bit, and it was mm-hmm. pretty good once you get the hang of it. But he's doing these, he'll do these whips back and forth, and then lean and crank it, and one wheel's off the ground. Yeah. You know, and you're going, dude. You but know. he said in the live last week or two weeks ago, he's learning his escape points. Like, yeah. if he knows he's about to go over, how can he pull that thing back in, or how can he? How far it's, can he it's go? a dangerous thing for him to be on that bike, more than us. Yeah, because he's strapped in it. We named the bike the Black Boar. You know, <laughs> That's the fucking rider, man. A guy like like you know what? You got to take my arm. Whatever you got to take, I'm still gonna find find a way to do it. Yeah, like, figure it out. Yeah, and then to get to the point where okay, now I'm getting this three wheel three wheel machine on two wheels. Yeah, let me figure out how to ride it even better. Like that's a rider. We man. need that, to get that's inspiring. That's almost like emotional. And I know just being behind the scenes from this point of view that you guys got so much more interaction with that guy that you couldn't even capture that I'm, dude, yeah. I'm happy about amazing. that. Uh, that's, gotta, that's amazing. Yeah, you exactly. Check it out. Your audience would be great if they went and checked it out on the YouTube channel. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, yeah, he's a, he loves competition. He loves riding, you know, and so he's not going to quit. But he's got a mind that is so strong because, like he'll tell you, walking in here as an example, he's looking at – a door handle an edge of a desk where he can grab but every thought about his movement is thought out pre-moving yeah. and his sister painted his toenails when he was in the hospital and he was so pissed at her <laughs> but he he would one. take the red toenail on the right hand foot and drive it up his leg into his mind and push it back down and and want it to move and would do that with every tone it was an exercise he went through Jesus. Now he's walked across Death Valley. He's ridden across the country twice on a bike with his mother, Toots. Wow. A bicycle. Dude. Yeah, a bicycle. Yeah. Well, we, we just tried to get uh, Harley Davidson interested. They loved the story, but we wanted to get a tri-glide for him mm-hmm. and, and have it set it up for himself because, you know, his bike with the tank, it goes 80 miles. You know, then you got to fill it up again. Yeah. You know, it's, we need to get so he can actually do some traveling. Absolutely. Yeah, but... Check it out. You'll be inspired. It'll want yeah. to make you want to go ride even more. Now, th- those kind of stories, is uh, they're, they're hard to watch sometimes. Not not in a bad way, For but sure. it's just like, you know, like it's inspiring. But at the same time, it's also gr- like it's a painful you, reminder of makes you uh, appreciate a little bit of the opportunity you have. And that's kind of like it brings you back to the whole point of, you know, what what's keeping you from doing what you want to do on your bike right now? And like That's his goal. Yeah. Like this dude's. You know he's he's overcome so much of adversity to get to that point to do what you take for granted. Right. There's a scene in there where he he says he's been he's dreamt of riding a Harley to his hometown again. That was yeah. his dream, and he puts his hands together and he, he says I did it and he thanked us and it was like pretty gnarly. But he's happy, smiling the whole time, like you said. Yeah, it's a positive feel good flick. You know? Yeah. 
for sure. But I think back to your point with this kind of idea of why aren't you doing it? Because other people yeah. overcome it's. You know what? You just have to go out and ride, and we don't care if you ride the weekend for fifty miles. And then that becomes 100, then that becomes 500. That's what he did. He mm-hmm. went for five miles. Then it became 50, and his biggest day was 300. Yeah. Right? So just get out there. You don't have to do 7,000 miles like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. You. But maybe <laughs> maybe at the end of the day, you end up on a 7,000-mile trip, and you're just blown away about what you saw. Yeah. What's up, guys? I need to drop in real quick and give a big thank you and shout out to Thundermax EFI for helping me make this podcast trip possible. I just got home from a 28-day, 7,200-mile bike trip where I at least filled up my gas tank once a day. My 131 was humming through the desert, mountains, forests, and even plenty of rain. The Thundermax ECM kept my bike running and operating like a champ with its auto-tuning technology The elevation, humidity, and temperature changes never affected my bike's performance. Their ECMs are a must for anyone looking to add all the go-fast goodies to your EFI-equipped Harley-Davidson. My Road Glide is paired with the Thundermax cooling fan, which is available for the Touring M8 models. Lane splitting in California's traffic and heat gets the motor oil hot, but with the fan, I was able to keep my bike's temps in the safe zone. Check out all these amazing products at shopteammax.com. And when you're ready to make the upgrade, use Fast Life at checkout to save yourself 10%. Now let's get back to the show. Man, just uh, just doing it, man. Like that's that's one of those things. And and I guess that's why like we've we've tried to create like the event where you are welcome to be at it. Uh, I feel like Born Free is one of those places where, you, you know, ride your bike out here you know i I don't know i we're in california like there's so many opportunities to meet other bikers here especially the style of bike that you like whether it be through the brands that are here or neptunes or you know rock store or said place right but it's those people all over the country that don't have the community or access to the community so they get it via the two lane life youtube channel or our podcast that I guess I'm more trying to reach out to to get them to try it, yeah. and and figure. Hey, man, like you, you probably got it harder, you know, as right. far as like figuring out like how to how to find people that you click with in this world. Uh, you know, going to Sturgis, you know, a great event. You should go, but if you're going solo to find people to hang out with, like that's that's fucking but, hard, dude. But if you're into riding and you do go solo and you're experiencing this and you're digging it, you're gonna meet people. Gonna you got to have that personality, though, man. You you yeah. know, it takes the, the we were talking about it at, at, at lunch. Like, there's so many different personality types. Some of us are completely fine jumping on a bike and being solo. Some of us need, like, like they they couldn't imagine traveling hundreds of miles away from their house without being with somebody. Like, oh, like You're right. That, I'm not. That's not safe. You know what I mean? And to your point, we got a lot of comments that, by solo riders saying, "I wish I had a buddy to ride yeah. with." And that was one. That was something earlier. Like you brought up a similar concept in the podcast, and like I want it to feel like someone's here, and we're just shooting the shit, having a conversation. Because some people might not have that. Yeah. We get comments. Hey, I don't have that many friends to ride with. So either a, can I ride with you? Or two, or b, it's really cool being able to watch this, and that I get to quote unquote ride with you in your videos. You know, it's kind of kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. But he was in uh, out of country. You were in Greece on vacation. I was sitting around one weekend. I'm like, I got nothing to do. So I, yeah. So I split, and I went up into the sequoias. I did a 300 mile loop solo. Yeah, it was great because it gave you that time in your mind. Is the band breaking up? <laughs> it was like this was, this was a long. Time it was like I am up for hire. Wait to get back home and blow this thing up. <laughs> I do, I do like a balance of solo and uh, with people. Um, last year, when I came out here and we did this podcast with, with uh, Thrashing and you guys, um, I was solo on that trip. I did get to see my wife and things like that out here, but a lot of, a lot of lonely rides from point A to point B, and I do enjoy that. But, I, man, I, I, I struggle with do I like it more or less than being with somebody else, like being with a group. 
and also i don't think i would ever have done a solo trip until i got used to doing it with the group like i don't think i could have been solo first then with the group right i had to have the group thing to get me confident being on the road traveling and then it becomes like second nature and then yeah i could do this by myself all day long right. you know well, part of that you're doing it for business and getting the things that you need done yeah. I, to me i'd rather have at least one dude like the two of you are going to have more fun probably than just you alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because at least there's – and you can always say, hey. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> Mad, Mad Max, go sit in your room. I need to relax a little bit. No. Two rooms? Hell, yeah. We were sitting in San Luis Obispo. Yeah. We walked in, and as soon as we opened the door, you just see one bed, and he goes, fuck. He goes, it was supposed to be two beds. I was like, ah, fuck it, dude. We don't, it is what it is. Yeah, we goes, slept in the same bed. And he goes, no, fuck that. Hold on. And he goes all the way down there. And he comes back and goes, there's another bedroom. We just didn't even look. There's like a shadow. <laughs> so we literally had like a two-bedroom suite. Nice. Uh, that first night. Which, yeah. Uh, it was nice. <laughs> it was awesome. Hey, I don't, I'm not hating on you if you slept in the same bed. No, that's what we do. So we, we, kept, we oh. cap our trips at, at eight people. That's two hotel rooms, four beds, and yep. we just two people per bed. We we you know? slept together a lot. Yeah. Lance a lot. and I a lot. We didn't find a new I. word for this. We, we slept, slept together. Slept. We slept together yeah. before yeah. we even rode. Yeah. yeah. We bunked. <laughs> yeah, we, we bunked. bunked. We've, we've yeah. We, we bunked sh- up. You know, we bunk up. We shared a sleeping area. Well, in yeah. California. Yeah. We shared a sleeping area. We yeah. call it spooning in California. Never did. Y'all call it docking. That's what y'all call it. Yeah, it's a docking station. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, y'all click in it like Legos. Yeah, <laughs> but um, hey, I, but I don't you know. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I mean, well, it makes the trips affordable for us because for if, sure. if we're all chasing like the you know we all got to have our own room and things like that, it's it's just not feasible. And that's probably the I think our wives have a hard time. And I'm not trying to go down a deep rabbit hole of like, babe, l- listen, listen to. Two hours, 35 minutes in, I really talk about how I really feel about going on a trip with the guys and, and you know, what you're – but we're not necessarily living this glamorous life on the road. Like, and unfortunately, just like everybody else, sometimes our old ladies are seeing the highlight reel on social media, you know. And right. The, the fun, the smiles of this, but there was that rainy-ass day. There was, there was that part where – you were unfortunately not the first one to fall asleep in a room of four dudes that snore their ass off. Right. That's the one. <laughs> Man, that's that's some of the fun part of it. it. There's almost like a, if you've ever been to camp or if, I don't know, if you were in the service and you enjoyed just the camaraderie of being around dudes, like it's the, you know, you're all going through the same shit all day together and then there's eight of you, you split up two rooms, four and four, and the, the laughs, the jokes, the the ball busting that goes on and, Man, there's I don't know. You're just it makes you, tight. I don't know. Closer as a crew is you're every day for two weeks. You're rolling in the place and changing out whether it's camping hotel, but man, I don't know. I wouldn't change it for anything. And I guess we could probably do it when we have the Air- Airbnbs, which we did one time, yes. one time this trip. It was nice having a house and being able to spread out a little bit. It was cool, but man, it's I still two person to a bed though. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I got a couch. I was the last man up, so I took the couch. But it was a uh, – man, I love the hotels. And like I said, I, it's it's not roughing it, but it kind of – like right. I said, it's not – like you said, it's not glamorous. It's not like we're, we've we got our own – there's a lot of, oh, man, I, Larry Larry got in the bathroom before me today, and I'm paying for it. Like, right. It's, <laughs> it, is, it is. like. But I wouldn't trade it for anything well, yeah. because the same thing. We've only got so much of this. Like right. this well, doesn't we, go forever. We have so many trips under our belt, so many planned, and, and we have definitely bunked together. We've had done that whole thing, and but a lot of the, I would say ninety percent of our trips, we try and find motels and hotels that they're totally in the budget, and we get three rooms. Yeah, you know? yeah. And the, it, but it's only because we're like all day together. All, everything we do together, we're filming yeah, yeah. together, we're arguing together. Then you, when you get the, you get your piece. Well, I completely agree to that. Uh, it's also probably one of those deals where we have there's eight of us. Yeah. So we, it, if I decide like you know what I'm checking out tonight, it's not like a morale killer for the rest of the group, right? Right, right. There's plenty of uh, other people to fill the void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I get it. And then like yeah. a lot of times when we go to Sturgis and on the way to Sturgis and this and that, and there's ten of us. Yeah, you're not going to get 10 different rooms. We, a yeah. lot of times we'll get 
two yeah. people in a room or whatever. But for me, most of the time, it's me and my son. Yeah. So that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's cool anyway, like you yeah. say. Yeah, fun. Screwing around with your friends. You know? Yeah, for sure. But I don't know, man, I'm, di- I'm digging it. So what do you what do you think, uh, like, I know you got, y'all just wrapped up filming the uh, the prior, or pre-Sturgis. Sturgis without a rally. Sturgis without a rally. Is that, is that the, yeah, the official Sturgis narrative? That's kind of what we're going with, yep. Yeah. And so that's going to be dropping over the next couple of weeks, especially going into Sturgis. Yep. And then, so add that on top of going to Sturgis again. And so you're booked out with like, you got you got shows to drop for the next, what, two 20, months? 20 weeks. I mean, we got Damn, probably six more of these pre-Sturgis ones because we, we haven't even gotten into the storytelling part of it, just the ride out there. And then we're going to have, you know, it's usually an episode per day. So if this upcoming Sturgis trip is 10 days and we maybe film eight of the 10, mm-hmm. that's eight more. So we're we're at least 16 weeks out. Like we're going to Born Free this weekend, but we're like, it would be a really cool thing to film, but to fit that in, not only time-wise to have it be relevant and have people searching for it, but two, for me to edit that and still be ahead on the Sturgis stuff before we hit the road for two weeks and have that stuff drop like you know have a good time here have a good time there and people better like to stir the shit on youtube for a couple months our goal like what we when we ride and we film galen and i'll take our cards out of we have two cameras each Mm -hmm. and we'll take our cards give them to him and he'll have a folder for each day galen handheld galen helmet cam because we have conversations we have and then just random handheld shots so he'll put his in his mind so he'll have a when he gets back he has it set all day but our goal, like, to go to Sturgis and do what the stuff we're doing in this, we want to go to Sturgis and Josh has to do nothing, like, edit-wise. Like, oh, we need to drop Wednesday and we're stuck in Sturgis. He's going to have two or three drops done, so while we're on the road, they'll be dropping Yeah. without yeah. him having to drop them. So it's like a... Because even the, even the cards themselves, just at the end of the day, we got 12 cameras that are rolling all day long, so to upload those, organize them, put them in a folder, that's... That's like two hours a day just doing that. So you if, wanna, I, if I had to do that and, and edit and drink and have a good time, it's like then that's you're in not the books. Then you're saloon drinking and you're <laughs> playing cards. You're like, yep. There's no editing getting done. You know? Not a chance. You don't need another guy, dude. That's what it comes <laughs> yeah. up to. You need to. Well, you know, we talked about that. It's, but it's it's we got a system down. Jaden could be the pizza guy. You know, the, the guy that orders pizzas. Yeah. Remember, he was a. Uh, that's the. Uh, what was that in the uh, Gone in sixty seconds? The guy's like. The guy thought it was more important, but he was just the guy that orders the pizzas, and he tried to steal the car, and it was. Eh. And you know, we've, I've seen the movie. I'm missing it. I'm missing it. I mean, we've talked about a lot of different ways, but like, when Josh comes back with the footage, he knows what he saw, and he knows what he filmed, and he knows our personalities. So when he's laying down the timelines, mm-hmm. he knows what he wants. To, he knows the story he wants to put together. Or what. We all did. But yeah, when you shoot, when you, uh, I imagine, I would think, hypothetical here, you have an idea of how you want to tell the story, right. and so you film with the concept of telling the story, so yes. you already kind of have it kind it's, of mapped out in your head. And we have a unique I, thing going on. There's YouTubers like Adam Sandoval. There's, there's, so that's a solo guy. Then you got a solo chick that does this, and maybe a husband and wife yeah, duo. doing it. So we have the three of us dudes. Now Josh is way incorporated into the whole vibe yeah but now our wives are incorporated into a lot of the vibe so there's like five characters in this this thing yeah you know well people like that shit though man like for sure when you think about it you know we started our podcast in 18 uh it was kind of like just me and my brother and yeah. then my brother's not much a part about it, part of it anymore but then Jaden starts to come on a podcast here and there and then this other guy does, and everybody's like, dude, I love it when those guys come on. Right, like, right. The, the closer, like, yeah. the people that are in the circle of the show, if right. that makes sense. No, totally. And um, sense. I don't know. It's like people like hearing that because, yeah, they hear from me all the time. So they're right. fucking sick of my voice, right? Well, so when you got someone else on there that's a familiar face that, that comes on there quite a bit, it kind of allows me to talk less. Right. And he can fill in some void, and then you also got your, your the actual guest. Well, well we have Ryan even, Shaw. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, even the funny thing is like Lance Jr. Mm-hmm. in his videos now Juan, Juan's got a whole like fan club. 
They're like, yeah. when's Juan going to wheelie? When's Juan coming on next? Because he's, he's just a character of a dude. It's, it's the they see, ego, like killer for anybody. Like, right? like I'm sure Lance or even myself, I'm like, yeah, I'm the fast life garage. But it was like, hey, when are you bringing this guy back on? Like, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, <laughs> well, um, Ryan Shaw is a guy from Utah. That yeah. Him and his family, his brother and everyone started watching our videos. Yeah. I saw his brother on a one trip in Vegas at a gas station. Hey, I know you guys. Then next time we went through St. George through social media, they are like, hey, we know you're going to be here. Can we come and hang out? Dinner. Then they rode a little bit with us. Then they did it. So now they've actually been in like two different videos. Mm-hmm. And they learned, they watched what we did. And they're like, that's amazing. But they kind of had little parts in a couple episodes. Well, those kind of things is a way of like, uh, you know, even like when you guys came to Texas and the little bit of me and Cody that was on it, like, I, you know, like not saying it, but it's an example of us. Yeah. Like people get, oh, those guys are here. I like those characters that you bring on here and there and blah, blah, right. blah. It, yeah, it you helps. guys were in a couple couple series, like the yeah. Texas run. You were in a mm-hmm. lot of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we also had Jared Call put us up in St. George when we went through to do Deadwood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a guy that buys parts from us is like, I'm going to put you up at the condo in St. George. You know, we're like, what? Yeah. Can we pay the cleaning fee? Can we? No, I'm. this is because you guys are, you give me so much on. Yeah. You know, inspiration on YouTube that I I can't repay you, which is interesting. <laughs> the homie that uh, they hooked us up with the for dinner, remember his name? Morgan. I'm gonna cut this out. It's Morgan. No, it's not Morgan. Uh, anyway, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the guy that bought your bike? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, we, we've had a lot of hospitality. I'm cutting all this out, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell me his name, and then I'll say it. Tina's wife. Tina's husband. Yeah, it's like fucking Jason or some shit. Billy. Steve. Billy Mike. How do you spell his name? Jim. It's R. Crystal. One. Seven. Well. Crystal mess. At any rate, uh, we, we, we uh, landed in St. George. We were going to go up to uh, Park City. Yep. And one of the homies, it came out to the camp out, and his wife yeah. was amazing. She was a fucking fun time. Her name was Tina. But everything rhymes with Tina, right? right? So the whole time she was leaning into it with us, like we we're just coming up with nicknames for her, like Terrible Tina, Tina Tantrum, Tornado Tina, uh, you know, just everything goes with Tina, you know what I'm saying? And so she was cool as shit. And then her, her husband, awesome dude, they rode out to the camp out from Florida. And so he reached out to us and he was like, hey, man, I want to buy you guys dinner. And I was like, cool, man, but there's eight of us. And he goes, all right, well, What's your PayPal? And do send us six hundred fucking dollars. Really? Nice. Yeah. And uh, we ate a very underwhelming Mexican dinner in Park City, Utah. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was delicious. Don't hate on it. <laughs> and uh, the next day, I think we had breakfast on it too. So it was it was a big help, man. It's like that shit's awesome, though, man. I, like the hospitality that people show. I mean, I can only think if I was if if I had like condos or Airbnbs or something to that nature i i mean i wouldn't open it up to the world just for the hell of it just like oh you got a bike cool come fuck up my shit right but <laughs> um but people that are doing something that are traveling through and if i could be in a bit of it you well, know like jared at, in st george he's a biker yeah and he's like so i'll give that to you would you just say something about it yeah and so if other guys are watching this or gals that come through hit us up on airbnb mm-hmm. happy to Happy to have you. He yeah, even had he even had uh, some uh, snacks, if you will, in the refrigerator. Uh, cold snacks, liquid snacks. Not a Montucky snack. Oh, not quite. But it they could have been them. a fifth of Jack Daniels and a bunch of the White Claws, mm-hmm. which Josh will tell you is not a good combination. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that was, yeah, that. Did you get fucked up? Well, I mean, as always, but the next morning I just woke up like half re half ridiculous if you will and uh we're trying to like do some basic social media stuff and i'm like looking at a one eye and we got a four minute ride to breakfast and i'm struggling but it was cool it was just a wake up so call his new nickname is one eye jack yeah there you go. that's my biker name back to that it's yeah, a good one i'll take we, it uh, what was it uh yeah the the drinking thing that's that's probably the hardest thing sometimes is 
you want to go hard as fuck and then especially when you come to a town where you got the people that want to hang out with you and show you their bars and things like that and you want to have the energy that they they are they see you have on the podcast right like oh man i see you with those mountains of fucking beers dude like let's uh so let's, the cheat code on that is if a dude's gonna come out and hang out with you while you're on the road in his town or a town close to him he's gonna ride behind you on the way back to your place we've seen it now three years in a row they want to come out they want to have a few beers and if you indulge and you have a good time they're gonna go hey they're gonna give you that hometown right i'm gonna block for you you guys stay out in front of me dude we've seen it every time uh drew in the zoo the little we missoula we had a couple guys wow you out. guys must drink a lot yeah, well, it's not even out. that bad, but it's just if it if it gets to that point, well, it's, most of the time, most of the time <laughs> we really don't. But it is when when people, I don't know, it's just the the friend thing. Like I said, they come out, we hang out. I think they usually have a good enough time. We're like, "Fuck you, dude! You're getting back to your hotel safe." Like, yeah, for sure. I'll take this if I have to, and they'd ride behind us. They, I don't know, it's amazing. But yeah, yeah. we've got the best friends that we meet up on the road. Like you guys talked about earlier, people meet. That's my, that's one of my funnest things about this whole trip is when the guys obviously the hospitality pe- people putting you up on the road you can never repay that that's such a that's it's such a just a selfless giving of it's amazing that's what this whole culture is about but the guys that just come out and maybe they can't put you up they're in a one bedroom part but they're they're doing the thing like everybody else they're like i can come meet up with you for like 100 miles and ride with you and meet up at a bar right. and hang out and that's it's to me that's the best well we've, we've had guys best. jump in seeing us on the road mm-hmm. like not stopped we go by and next thing you know they're like they're in the rearview mirror aj gillis right dude last year do the same thing he was up there he was on a like a two-day walkabout kind of and he was following up he saw we were at the thing but we all at the uh forest gump lighthouse we all lost yeah and sure enough he caught us on the road where all of a sudden i'm looking at him i see his head do this and next thing he's right behind us and yeah we chalk it chop it up at the gas station and he stayed with us for another six hours or something he rode 200 miles to meet up with us then yeah. rode like 150 miles with us and then went back 200 miles to his place i'm like all right that's fucking awesome dude yeah why not we've had guys in a video in our sonora video where there's like six bikes rolling by and they're waving mm-hmm. in the video we're just catching we don't even know it go it comes up in the video but an hour later we get a dm hey we just rode by you guys on the blah blah, blah you know like, yeah 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 you know. that dude's a as long as i live in dallas he's got a spot to stay with me and i kind of feel like it's the same way if i ever get back around around his area right he's gonna go come on dude come on and well, that's that, what it's all about yeah. you rarely call those cards in but it's just nice to know you have them right and yeah i don't know that's enough for me How well we got plenty time? of room for you here well, How about the one that time too. that dude rode by, him and his chick, on the freeway in Phoenix. He goes by us, slows down, sees us, and then gets in with us, and then goes off to the gas station. And he rides up to him and goes, hey, he, the guy's... We went, we split. He went, we went left, he went right to the gas station, because I don't think he wanted to think he was interfering, but he was. I So I, I rode right up to him. And he's just like, no, no, I follow your videos. I just, like, you know, it's like, can I ride with you the rest of the way through Phoenix? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, dude. Only dope. if you get gas with us and act like you're our friend. Come on, dude, let's hang <laughs> I think out. He was a little bit t- scared though. I pretty was like, what? Did I offend yeah. anyone? Or and that, and that's cool. But for the most part, don't be like that's the. Right. We're not those guys. Well, we're not those respectful. bikers. It's good to be respectful. You gotta, sure. like, you gotta have a little, space and yeah, for sure. Because we don't know how he rides. Well, that, yeah. and that's one thing that pissed me off. That one Sturgis trip we did, we uh, we had our ten guys, and then uh, one of the guys with us, like three or four of his buddies, showed up in Mexican hat. Mm-hmm. We're gonna ride with you guys, this and that. And we all took off, and you know we have our, and the guys. I thought, all right, they're being cool. They're staying back, and a couple of them just started weaving in and out of us, and I'm like, going, what the fuck? Like yeah. I would never get yeah. in another people's group and push. You know? Yeah, that's it. That that's the one thing that gets tough because the same thing with us. Like we all have, for the most of us, like the ones up front, like myself, Cody, James. Uh, we have kind of, we got a, we got our spot. Like that's our. We're on these trips. Like we know where we like to it's be. Like at. the dinner table. Yeah, it's yeah. It, you know, and uh, you know, it's a it's a spot of just comfort. Right. You right. know, and every once in a while, like the three of us will play like musical chairs, like. Yeah. 
I get, you know, I, I lead a lot, but sometimes I just, you know, I'll, I'll fall back to get some shots or some or some video of some people, and then it feels good to hang out with the fucking nobodies in the back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but, I feel uh, you, man. But, you know, I, I like the vibe of, uh, you know, you we all have a comfort spot. And then we also know, like, you know, every once in a while, like, one of the guys is like, I want to stretch my legs a little bit. Right. Jaden will rip up on the, on, you know, one of the right-hand lanes and go a little bit forward. Uh, but he's in your group. Yeah, like we all know, like every once in a while, some of us just, you know, especially like if you're in the pack, like I'm usually seeing nothing but cars in front of me, not other bikes, right? right. So I can understand, like. That's why your forks are nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By design. Uh, but that's why, uh, you know, I understand why when people want to just kind of get out of that monotony of being in that, that parade line, basically. But the most important thing is, is like. You know the guys you ride with. We all know the guys we ride with, even if it's the thrashing guys or whatever. Yeah. We know exactly what's going on. And so when a new guy's in there, you're like, he's right next to me. How do I know what the hell he's Well, when I see a guy, to your point about that group, that drops in and he's going so fast and starts breaking loose in front of cars. Yeah. And then the next, and he's putting now us in danger. Right. Right? Because he can't hang on to that. Right. Right and he cr- hits the wall cracks up that car is going to come right into the rest of us and then when the colorado chp pulls him over with guns drawn <laughs> and we're gone i mean you got to roll shit that we don't get to see on the yeah, side we were, we were <laughs> on, and going through uh, outside of grand junction on i-70 I yeah. and we were being complete racing Dude, that, that strip is way, that's designed to race, dude. It is. But really it's hardcore fast. lane splitting when you're really not supposed to. And this other group of guys was with us. Well, people in their cars were calling. Now the HP is out there looking for us. They pulled the guy over. We happened to get off for gas at a, at a little off the road spot. A half hour later, he comes and goes, the cops pulled me over. They had a gunpoint. They're looking for everybody. They're getting phone calls like these guys are splitting lanes. So we racing. turned left and went to Steamboat Springs instead we of up to the detour. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was happening to us on last year when we came back from, uh, we were going from Vermont to Niagara Falls. Those little towns that you go through in New York, they're they're not 30 miles apart. They're like five miles apart, right? right? right. And so by the time you get out of the town and you get to speed, there's some lady in this fucking two lane road, right? Where you have to go around her, and it's okay if it's just one of us. But when there's eight bikes that go around you, they freak out, and yeah. so they call the cops. Right. And then we get met with cops in the at the beginning of the town, and they sit there. We're not speeding. When we come to the town. They just get behind us, <laughs> and they follow us out of town. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's it's strange, but yeah. I, I mean I get it. But did you have any of this we, when we were up back east? I, we ran every toll road because there was no way to, it was like either exact no pay, change yeah. or we just, and then we went to the last one and the gate wouldn't work and we're like trying to figure it out and a guy comes on, hey, are you the bikes that keep going through the toll? <laughs> <laughs> no, we saw those at a gas station. But, but luckily we were on Harley. I uh, said, yes, we are. Bikes. And they're like, well, you've plugged in, the camera's now reading eight axles and you're only plugging in for two. And I'm like, well, how do we do this? He's like, well, one at a time. Each of you go through separately. Mm. Their their toll system is so gnarly. Just boss, yeah. <laughs> or just Later, go nerd. around the go around the gate. So we we were on Harley. Uh, they're not media bikes. They were what fleet fleet, fleet bikes. bikes. So when we got back, we said, hey, we picked up the phone. And we're like, we might have run a lot of tolls. So just so you know, like <laughs> you said, that, nothing oh, ever yeah. happened. The moco can eat that. Yeah, they don't. So is that run? Hey, I that's think the they difference. Let it slide. You're on a Harley. If you're listening to this, you're probably on a Harley. You're not on a fucking BMW or a Honda. Run the fucking tolls. Be a man. Yeah. Figure it on the backside. Well, we Let it go to collections. Yeah. This is not we sponsored not by Fast Life. Legal this advice Jayden, by Dragon. Uh, Jayden, big Bud, Jayden's baby. Jaden's got a lot of baby great bud. tips to help uh, you on the road. <laughs> run the tolls. Right. Jaden's got a tip. He, you know, we, we were kind of doing some, uh, you know, GoPro and like, I, I'm going to try to do something. I, I failed. I, I fucked up. Uh, but Jaden had a couple tips from the road. Here's here. What's one? What's a good one, Jaden? Uh, hey guys, this is Dragon from the road. You want a little tip for uh, traveling? Save some money between gas stops. What I like to do is buy a water bottle, maybe the first stop, or bring one with you. And a lot of places will let you fill it up when you go in. And while you're in there, 
Steal something. Shop there. <laughs> uh, Be a man. Every, everything is a uh, buy one, get one if you're brave enough. So if you're going there to fill up your water bottle, still a Snickers, still a Pop-Tart. Uh, if you're wearing a hoodie, a bag of Doritos. That's pretty pretty concealable. But only at, like the loves, the big ones. If it's a mom and pop, take it easy. Just fill up your water bottle. And so go you're away. shit in luck here, not shit out of luck. We can do that. You can, you can steal up to $1,000 out here. And have no problem. Well, it still makes me feel bad, but at least well, it's but a big corporate entity like love. Go to Target and eh. still $1,000 worth of food or whatever you need. No, 950 bucks. Yeah, 950 yeah. Mm-hmm. Do just, a sleepy just bag of ten. Sweet spot. Yeah. I'm just talking about shaving off three, four bucks of gas stock between Gatorades <laughs> and, and Snickers, things so, like that. It adds up over a, a month-long trip. Or you just all get back to the bike uh, and say, did you pay? No, did you pay? I thought you paid. No, did yeah. you pay? We just leave. With you. Oh, there's so many times I walked out and just, poof, here's a whatchamacallit out of my pocket. We're, Hello. I put my, I usually put the food. Jaden, you just made me spill. <laughs> whatchamacallits are from, they were born in the 80s, man. It's delicious. Man. It's delicious. It's delicious. It's <laughs> underrated candy bar. <laughs> People sleep on those. Oh, shit. Whatchamacallit and Dr. Pepper. Thank wow. You yeah. So, the, I mean, ever since, uh, I mean, I, was the Panama, I know the camping trip was the first one you guys did with Harley Proper, right? Yeah. And uh, how has that been? I mean, I know you got to get PC as fuck right now, but how has that been, uh, like, working with Harley and, and some of their projects and, and promoting some of the bikes and things like that? Well, it's kind of interesting. We're, we don't do the, like, the, hey, we got this new bike, test ride it. Yeah. Like, they'll call us and say, hey, we need you guys and your wives to ride the ultra limit is we're going to film you and do a little mini spot for the launch yeah. but the cool thing about the relationship with harley is like if we need bikes in another state they'll pretty much have them there if they yeah. know the trip we're going on so it's been pretty cool it's I, helpful yeah i i mean i don't think there's any pc i i don't think we um have been part of harley's kind of youtube stuff mm-hmm. um They've just asked us to do projects, and it's like being the enthusiast. Okay, great. Um, do the launch with us. Okay, great. If it's bikes to from Milwaukee to Maine, okay, great. There hasn't been this like you have to do, and and that's what's kind of cool about it because if if we were beholden to them, we'd have to give up all of our other sponsors. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So it's more of a project thing that they do. Yeah. And it's we're like kind of honored to do it when they ask, but it's not you're not doing a project with them five times a year yet. Yeah, yeah. But I say I'd love to get to that. We benefited a lot from having a relationship with them for sure. Because if we need something, we're going to get it. Yeah. And they're 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 pretty cool. A lot of times they'll call and say we got this project, and we'll say, do you want us to be us, or do you want us to be guys just riding your bikes? Mm-hmm. And they'll tell you, you know, oh, we want, we want you to be you. Right, but yeah. they really, if it's something that's for their corporate, then it's, they want you to be you so that they can use that, but it's, they really want you to be Harley. So whether it's wardrobe or what have yeah, you, helmet yeah. gear, whatever. But like Harley HD Pan America, their Instagram, they just posted one of our our trip photos on their thing saying, hey, check out Two Lane Life. So, yeah. you know. No, I mean, it's a good relationship and it fits. I mean, even whenever I first met you guys, like the vibe is good it's like you know i hope to be doing what you're doing now in in you know another 15 years when i catch up or and uh i don't mean that as a jazz yeah it's it's okay we're sage (laughs) (laughs) um but i think there's a lot of other men out there in your age range that probably feels more like you guys are like you guys put out you know what you put out they feel more connected to that than the typical version of your age demographic biker, right. if that makes sense. I would right. agree. So, you but know. It, but it's been a really good run with them, and we've got some other projects that we've talked to them about. Um, we've said this on our live before. We met Jason Sims, who runs the Cannonball Run. Mm-hmm. He's got three nineteen forty one, um, you know, army bikes, and we've talked about doing a project over in D Day Normandy when that comes Heavy around low. in a couple of years and. Us be on current bikes. They're on. Jason is on the, the older bikes and and do a trip out of it. But we'll see if that comes to fruition. But Harley's yeah. into it. Yeah, but They're loving the idea. But it, the cool thing is mm. that we 
at least have a relationship enough. I'll do one more. Um, where we can call them. Yeah. And then at they can tell us yes or no. Yeah. You know. So has has international been knocking on the door? Or what, what yeah. What's your thoughts on that? We're going to end up doing the D-Day thing. My, my, it's really funny. My son-in-law last night at dinner mm-hmm. was saying, I want to get you guys over to Vietnam. I want to get you guys over here and, and ride this and that. And I'm like, why do you want to? He goes, it's just really cool to do this. And he works in uh, entertainment. TV. And his nice. job, a lot of his stuff that he does when he's producing is he'll – he goes, the best thing to do if you're going to go run or do a road trip in Vietnam. Thank you. He goes, he knows how to call and get to the people, that the government, and say, we're going to be there flying drones and riding motorcycles. And then he goes, they help you. They want you to do it and show their countries. So it helps out with tourism. For so them. Yeah, so there, there could be some stuff in the future for overseas. I mean, I, I have to tell you, when we were headed to Deadwood, mm-hmm. um, there were more motorcycles out on the road than we've seen in two years and yeah. and most of them were international tour we met a group of german guys we met a group of chinese so, so there's people that are now coming back into the country mm. and riding and so for us you know with the pandemic stuff that's gone on i mean we got to get vaccinated we've got to get stuff going we've got to do all this bullshit to get into a country we just haven't been willing to do that yet yeah. You know, and hopefully as things kind of progress, Mm -hmm. we can get They're still trying to get people to vaccinate to go out of country now? We were in. Now they put that off. but like they did. Well, during the whole time of the pandemic. Yeah. You know. uh, See what you did there. (laughs) I'm just saying we we could have easily last year went. Yeah. Um, Not easily because it costs a lot of money, but. We could have went last year. There's no he he wasn't going to go across the even the Canadian border. If you had to have a vaccine, yeah, There's no I wouldn't. Way. I got fake ones to go to New York. Yeah, like um, when I took my son to New York, uh, you know, I found a, I found, I had a homie hookup. <laughs> Does it? That's all you say? Yeah, it's over now. I've already got away with it. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but I, I'm hoping that you know, as you think about, like we were in Puerto Vallarta in October. Yeah, and we had to get a test coming back in. Mm. So there's still some of this stuff out there, but I think over the next year or so, I mean, if you're seeing international travel coming this way, yeah, it's got to be opening up a bit better. And I'm, I'm not smart enough to know about all that, but I, yeah. I think going across the pond just with the visitors that we have, whether we go into England or France or even Australia, New Zealand, some, there's got to be that in our future just oh, for sure. to go check it out it Well, in the future for you guys. Uh, my son just went to Europe, and he didn't need to wear a mask on the planes, and he didn't need to have a test to come back in. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So if y'all could do if hit your lottery ticket tonight, go do an over uh, overseas trip tomorrow. Where would it be? First, first one. What, what's there your, was what's uh, big, uh, I'm into the doing the D-Day thing on the 80th and, and doing the whole World War II tour, but we have a lot of people that hit us up from Australia that want us to come ride down there. I almost what do y'all want to do? I, no, I, would, I would almost no, go what, what, what do you want to do is I what wanna, I'm asking. I would ride Europe. You want to do Europe? Yeah. I, I'd do the Alps and stuff like that where yeah. we're up deep. I second you that. You know, and, and get up into the high country. Our buddy Franz is the same way. He's Alps, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think mine's Japan. I want to go to That'd Japan be cool real too, bad. For sure. Real I mean, bad. I've been in Europe, and I've been, like, standing at the Ardennes Forest, and I'm very into the history of war and, mm-hmm. and what goes on. And anywhere I've gone, whether it's Pearl Harbor in Hawaii or whatever, I get that that inner side feeling. I get really into it, and I yeah. like being there. And I like to imagine back, like, wow, there were 18-year-old kids here fighting for, yeah. you know. There's this whole thing that I'm really into, you know. Mm-hmm. So even if it's Deadwood or, or uh, Tombstone, Arizona, or somewhere there that – there was strife and, and hard times and I'm yeah. into it. I like that I like all that shit too, man. We uh we went to we, the when we did our Sturgis trip in twenty, we did we went to Dodge City and we sat down at the table with uh with uh Doc Holiday Doc Holiday's Holiday. he's got the gun under the table. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dude I I I <laughs> fell I mean, I guess it's also like a uh it, it doesn't help that you have like shows like Yellowstone and in 1883 come out that like 
emphasize kind of like where we live, right? right. This is the shit that kind of took place here, not, not Yellowstone, but 1883 starts in Fort Worth and it goes yeah. yep. towards that way. So you're just like, oh shit, well, there was something cool about this. This was a, this was hard for people. The plains was hard. Was it the Oregon Trail that they did? Uh, no, but what we look at is just shit ass boring riding <coughs> between Dallas, Fort Worth, and beyond. Imagine being was doing the that hardest, in the most intre- treacherous yeah. shit for people to, you know, trying to further the storms the west. were, were, like, were they massively. Just, uh, you know, the the just the the weather was hard to get through. The the vastness and you know, it's not. It's like a it's like a desert with grass. There's nothing. So they couldn't get yeah. over rivers. Let's, but, but let's get some horses. There were badasses to then too. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm gonna take some money. I'm gonna try to help keep this group together. I mean, you think about immigrants that came across and they're they're betting on someone to get them somewhere. Yeah, and yeah. they can't even communicate. They have no weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they're and yet they're right gonna there. jump in a yeah. wagon and try to make their life better. And just hoping that the the people they pay off to help them are going to be good people and not right. rob them or leave them high and dry. I mean, I, I think we're all – all our family lineages is sitting here on, like, we, we, we hit the lottery of uh, – we had some, some strong uh, – I mean, when you look at the map right behind you guys, look, if you from where Dallas is, going to Oregon, I mean, we did it on motorcycles. It's not easy, yeah. but it's no. still – Infinitely easier than it was without bridges and roads oh, and on camp, like it's just we were going insane. through the one part they where they like it. they had these like four foot deep maybe ten foot deep here and there like just I wouldn't call them canyons but they're like where the water kind of like cut through the ground so it's like you're riding and you're seeing all that and you're like oh what well what if I was riding my horse across this there's a fifteen foot gap between here and the other side I can't jump that motherfucker. Yeah. You know, but you have to, as a as a guide or as a cowboy, know where if you see a little bit of a ripple, is that rock? Is there structure? Is there? Is it not quite as deep there? Exactly. Right. You've got to figure all that terrain out. There's just so much that went into it that I respect um, so greatly because when you start riding across it, you can look at it like, oh, I'm in Kansas. This is boring. Or you'd be like, fuck, man, what was it like? It was like going over every hill, not knowing what was on the other side. Yeah, at one point, you know well, what I'm saying? I, I grew up in the Mormon church. Yeah. Right? And not the, there anymore. But interesting thing that they, pre pandemic, probably for five or six years prior to that, maybe 10, they started reenacting. Mm-hmm. Now, it wasn't the same because they would, have a, they would have a group of people cooking and stuff for them. But they made families, and not made, he volunteered for it, mm-hmm. and you walked across the plains in hand carts. You oh. camped every night. Yeah. And there were covered wagons. And they, <laughs> just to give a sense of what people went through. Yeah. So they'd pick a place in Wyoming and walk across. And it's like, I don't well, know. They used to have things where they had uh, hundreds of people standing there, and they'd you'd have a flag, and they would fire the gun off and you ran and you went and claimed your ground yeah, it was oklahoma yeah, yeah. there was also uh the, the other thing that we were joking about at one point was where were we at where we had like we were closer we had read something about like where the railroads met east and west and we were thinking like man the 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 east the east was long and flat and straight and then all the, the west is like not as long nowhere near as long as the east but they had all the worst fucking ground right, to travel. Took as long to build it. Yeah, going through all the mountains and yeah. around shit and dynamite. It's like, I don't know. That shit's cool to me. Like Continental Divide, we do, you know we've all passed it traveling. It's like, what does that mean? It's like, oh yeah, this is where rivers flow this way and rivers flow that way. <clears throat> but everybody thought it was like the highest point of the country. No, no. you know what I mean. It's not. It's just where whoosh, east and west. Yeah. And your map behind us has you know it shows a little bit of elevation, but I've I've looked at elevation maps what we just did this last two weeks with the guys and yeah dude it's insane compare last year don't it's nothing on anything else we've ever done but this is the most get up there ears popping all the well, time what are you guys down in tex and in, in like fort worth or feet. dallas 400 feet so you went from 400 to places where you're like eleven thousand, yeah 100 yeah. and then back down the coast where you're like 500 yeah it's 
I think I got tinnitus on this. Like I have a constant <laughs> ringing in my ear that I've had for about a week now. I don't, Set pipe on that side. I yes, guess. Exhaust I guess. Is ripping. That's why I always ride in the left hand lane. You don't have to hear yeah. the pipes. <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, why do you, why, why do you know, I remember when I was a younger, uh, and I, I was a president of a bike club, and I was riding with another president, and he goes, yeah, you always ride in the left-hand side of the lane. And I never understood why until I rode in the right-hand side once next to my next buddy. To I was like, fuck <laughs> that, dude. <laughs> Especially with all these it's short pipes. Shorty yeah, here. shorty pipes. Deep. Like well, trouble. we have all just stock with some exhaust yeah. tips on, so we're pretty cool with that. For the first time ever. Right. Yeah. Like. I mean, They're still working with uh, Cobra, now. right? Still on the pipes and yeah. stuff. Nice. Yeah, one of the Cobra reps was in. Uh, it was in Dallas, and I name dropped you guys. Awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know those guys. Like, yeah. He's out of like St. Louis or somewhere out in the Midwest, but he 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 travels all over the country, hitting yeah. up all the drag spots. I think Ray. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Real cool guy. So we go to Sturgis this year. We're gonna we got like several. Where we're gonna go meet and greet? Like, oh yeah. So how gonna, does it feel doing that? Because Harley's gonna be one of them. They okay. want us to come to their thing, and then they want us to do a little ride with. I'm them. gonna show up and just unfold a table next to you guys. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Why don't you I don't know. Us? I don't know how to do. I don't. I don't know. Basically, we're standing there hanging out like. Because y'all did it. At, y'all did it at uh, uh, Legends that time. I yeah, saw you at there. Right? And, yeah. But the Legend one was kind of small because they're not at the the yeah. dealer. It's like, and it was. Early on, the, the probably had was, forty people there. But like when we were at Clockworks, at the the uh, Black Hills Harley, mm-hmm. there's thousands of people walking around. Brian was blown away because we it just was like we were there to film putting the fender on my bike and do a, a meet and greet with him. And but as soon as we rolled in, there was a line of people. Yeah. Wanting a picture, a picture and an autograph. And if I was gonna do it, I would want to. I would want to do it like as a joke. I would want to be like, "All right, Jaden, here we go. This is the thought. Let's let's make this. It's a meet and greet, but we're characters here." Well, yeah, but you can't. You're make dragon. A I'm bone saw. Yeah, but if these dudes, if people know these dudes on the road, that they yeah. want to. I mean, you can't. You gotta. I just. I don't know. I it's guess it's gotta uh, be like the camp out. Well, here's Every, here's everyone how everyone has to be a genuine encounter. And hey, man, thank you for coming. Super glad you're here. Hope we can help. And you kind of got to move on to the next guy. Here's how it it was more of a defensive position for us, I think. A what? Defensive. Because we've we've had people say to us, can we come ride with you? Are you going to be in Sturgis? Can we ride with you in Sturgis? And it was like, we don't, we can't. We can't. So it was like, all right, let's plan a day where you can come see us if you want to see us. Not expecting anything. Right, but we walked. We, as soon as we broke the, we every gas station, someone came up to us. But when we got into Lusk, Wyoming, it was like on. There were five or six yeah. people that came up to us, and then we get to Sturgis, and it was like and we had another group, and it was like we had Cole Seeley, who's a yeah Supercross, yeah. and his son, who's a bronze and and gold medalist in X Games. They were like. There's more people coming up to you guys than us, and it was just it just happened to work out that way. It wasn't yeah, and like give it me was a like, beer. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. So the meet and greet was more of a defensive. Can we let's get to a point where people can come that we don't have to really ride because we don't. There's so many people there, but it's always, we can't spend a, a day riding with. Uh, we'd like to, but. That's you, why we did we. That's why we would camp at Sturgis because, at that campground, the days in where we would stay at, it was a way that like, hey, I I can't I don't know what every day looks like. I don't know where right. we're gonna be. I don't know what the group wants to do, but if you want to be around us, we're right. gonna be at this campsite. Right. right. And we're all warm and welcoming. So at any point, you can walk up. And they're very right. out for sure. Hey, dude, what's yeah. up? I'm Jay. Right. How are you? Right. What's up? But the the thing that you get the most of is a, a son and a father walk up and say. You guys, we just want to thank you. This is my dad. He watches your channel. I watch your channel. We got our bikes running because of you guys. Yeah. You get that. Yeah. And all those things are, man, those are, <clears throat> they're, they're, re- they're rewards that you didn't know that they feel good. They, they reinforce right. like what you're doing, but obviously you don't do it for that, right? right. Um, I just, I don't know. Like maybe part of me feels like I should probably lean more into the whole being like that. Like, yeah, I'm going to be at Sturgis if you want to come say what's up, blah, blah, blah. But 
I guess I'm so self conscious of myself and just so in my head all the time. I'm just like, I don't. Why? Who wants to fucking see I me? Mean, people know you. You know, the I know they that, know. The yeah, people that that listen to your podcast, they know who you are. But I'm also like super awkward in person. Like if I don't know you, but you don't. You you can just be like a handshake and a picture, and they're done. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been weird to kind of do this stuff. Like yeah. I'm in the grocery store, and some guy, I've got my helmet on. He's, he taps me on the shoulder. I follow you, and I'm like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like, I get those. Those are easier encounters. It's the ones where, like, all my friends are watching. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that dude in Oregon, he's like, hey, man, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, yeah, dude. I'm not good at this, but okay. Well, you can know, you do it a few times? Like, yeah. everything that we do it gets easier and easier. It's just... My friend uh, my friend sent me, while we were on this trip, he sent me a video that happened in 2017 where we were in santa fe at a hard dealership and a dude walks up to me and him while we were about to pull out and he goes fast life garage i'm like yeah yeah he goes dude can I get your autograph and it's the most it's the most awkward thing that works i feel like i was getting punked straight up <laughs> but he sent me the video again because it was around this time because we were this is the first year i ever went to born free and this dude like has me sign a hat that was like a Mighty Ducks hat or some shit like that. It has nothing to do with motorcycles. Right, it has nothing right. to do with me. And my my signature on it has nothing to do with any. It's never going to be at a swap meet, right? right. <laughs> it's just signed by Jace. The dude he may still have that, but he, but he that's the that's the. I'm I, you, I guess if it's, you look at the social media yeah. that we go through today, there's no way in hell without having Instagrams and podcasts and yeah. YouTube channels that you have the reach. Ooh, do that three times. Well, that's why we made postcards. I did? With, yeah, that's uh, dope. With us yeah. on it, our names on it, and sometimes we'll sign a bunch of them and take them with us. But yeah. but I, my point is, by that's you putting idea. yourself out there, uh -huh. people feel like they know you. Agreed. And so that's the hard part for us. It's like... Um, We've given of ourselves, but they don't really know us. We're pretty authentic on the channel, so it's like they kind of do know us. Yeah. But they don't know us because they've never spent time with us. But they know we're not different guys on the channel. No, so, I'm just saying. Like, get, so it feels – so yeah. that's where that natural – like I, like if you're LeBron James uh, and you God, go up I'd into a restaurant him. and try to get his autograph, okay, he may or may not do it. You don't really know him. Yeah. Right. But if you're surprised that he big times you, you're the fucking idiot. Right. 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 And <clears throat> you guys don't big time anybody. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't think any of us do. There's. Right. You, know, no. you have the times where it's like, oh fuck, dude. Yeah, whatever. But I don't know. We're all in the same thing together. I was. But that's Man's that's my point. It's like so they feel like okay, we comfortable. Yeah. And we make them feel comfortable when we don't yeah. say no. Yeah. Like yeah, let's take a picture. What if we just like lean into making them feel uncomfortable yeah. when they walk? No, hey dude, I follow you. Like hey dude, all right, pull well, out a sharpie. You mean, where you want me sign? <laughs> but whether it's on the road or surge, too many dudes that we meet are a bike night that oh, and if you can just we tell them if you can get over that that shelter dog uh, first like oh I'm so nervous to meet you. If you can actually just come and go, hey man, listen your shit. You don't suck. Whatever, we'll laugh at you. And after that, like. <laughs> We'll probably have beers with you and like you. Like it's not a, it is not whatever you built in your head to just come hang out. Well, and we because get it. there's not so many of us where it's like we've got an army of dudes with us. We get it all day long on the store. Like there's only three of us, and so it's like, hey, this is Josh from Two Lane Life. I want to talk to you about your order. What? What? Who is this? This what? is Josh. Hey, it's Galen. What? We had a nurse that was in his office. And we called. We had a question about his order. He couldn't stop screaming for like three. The people came in. It's They're like, "Are you okay?" Ah! <laughs> it was like, <laughs> and on. All right, we're so as is. Sorry, right, we're sorry about the. And on you the other side me. of that, like you were saying, you can be scared, to, uh, uh, or just like, "Hey, be a cool dude." I'm gonna not mention the town because, pretty unlikely, he's listening, but. We went to a town after a very long day. We're hanging out, doing our deal. This guy comes up, <laughs> you maybe me? You know, and we shake his hand, whatever. And then we're gonna go to the bar as we're walking away. D do you mind if I join you? Like, we didn't say no, but we didn't give any verbal, yeah. you know, confirmation. 
sure enough, behind us, hung around. It's not like he's a bad dude or anything. It was just, we just had a long day. It'd be cool if maybe we could enjoy some time yeah. to ourselves. But you know? I think it goes back to that conversation about you being okay to travel by yourself. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sometimes that's all people have, and when they latch on to something where it's like more in, inviting. For sure. Then they feel there's a comfort that they can come up and feel more yeah, invited. Yeah, yeah. You know what Makes I mean? Sense. I feel like we've all we've opened it up, especially the last few years. On if we're coming through your area of the town, even if it's not necessarily your area, but if you're going to make the commitment to come hang out, we're going to come hang out. And yes, at, naturally, Let's there have is some a beers. there is a the eight of us are on this trip together. We've traveled for years together. There is a we're our group together. So it's not like there, it's realistic. You have to be realistic. Where it's not going to be like. Oh, what the fuck, dude? You're here. Yes, it's so good to see. You. I don't know you. How are you? Like, but come up, and we're gonna. I guarantee nobody in our in our group is an asshole. Right? Maybe except for him. I, yeah, nope. I'm an nope. But even then, I, I say that busting balls. He's so nice to people on the road too. No, like I'm on not. stuff like that, he really is. And it's where so many it's dudes fake. have come up, and we do have the where they feel welcome, and they yeah. they've left going. They didn't big time us. They didn't. Right. And it's. It's just that it's that catch point of we have to be real to ourselves where we're hanging out and we have to be a little bit guarded. Right. But at the same time, if we know you're in the same team that we talked about, this you you love traveling, you love the same brands we love, then yeah, dude, we're on the same team. Yeah. And unless you just weird it out in the first sixty seconds, you're good. Just let the fucking right. game come to you. you. Know, and next thing people, you know, we're we're doing mushrooms together in a bar. <laughs> we're having a good time and. Hello, and now we're friends. <laughs> we're friends forever. But like saying people know you though, we've had people tell us when they meet us something about yeah. what we did in the video. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, did? That, that, what did I say? They knew it. Yeah. We didn't. Know That's it. the hardest thing about the pot. So many words, so many hours of yeah. drunk, so drunk conversations yeah, you on here. What you said. Like, I said what? <laughs> yeah. But um, it wasn't me. And yeah, dude. That's another thing to the dudes that come meet up. You got to remember, these guys, nobody remembers what they say, 180, whatever the fuck it is. Nobody remembers this exact moment. Just go with the flow, man. Yeah. You don't have to quote things. You don't have to prove that you know. Just show up and say you're that's a, That's you're, why you're this cool. That's why that's this it. podcast or or your, like when you guys do lives, you're, it's in the moment. It's what it is. Whatever happens, happens. It's, right. It's part of the conversation. No script. It's not a script. And so when it's not a script, you don't really remember Every fucking like thing you said, right? You know what I mean. And that's not that's not what's gonna make me connect with you and be friends. Is that oh, this guy remember what I said September of twenty twenty one on that one? No, what's gonna make us be friends is what happened that night in Missoula, Montana at the right. bar. Like right. that's I don't care how much you listened to it before. You showed up. You were cool. We bonded. We we had a good time, bro. We're friends going forward now. That's all that matters right. to me. Right. And so. <laughs> well, most most guys are guys, mm-hmm. but there's a percentage that are like, okay, it's over the top. You know, it's because maybe they don't have the connections or what have you. But ninety nine percent of the time, we found people that come up to us, just great people, handshake, photo, appreciate what you do. And uh, we're going to f- continue to follow and spread the word. And it's like, great, thank you. Couldn't yeah. ask for anything more. Yeah, you can't. Because in turn, you do it for them. Right. You don't. Yeah, it's to give them something to hopefully inspire them to ride or, or yeah. you know. I mean, you guys have an you know, amazing yeah. setup, but nobody's. You guys aren't becoming millionaires off this. This is because yeah. you Wait love. Wait a minute, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as they you, do, this is. I mean, I'm going to produce their you guys podcast for the road. You guys have <laughs> passion for the traveling and the camaraderie and everything we've talked about. It's. I don't know. This is well. When, again, is. when we started this, it was our, the families telling us, "You come back with great stories." Yeah. And and then the second piece behind it was, can this pay for our travel? Can this just get us to the point where, you know, we get a hotel room, we get a dinner. And that the store is paying for that, or YouTube's paying for that, um, to a point where it's now like we have an opportunity. We're complete rubs now. We're we're rubs. <laughs> Full on, hundred percent rubs. We have an opportunity to um, 
hopefully benefit from it financially, uh, but at the same time still keep, you know, an authentic feel about the passion and love for writing and the storytelling, you know, and, and like we were talking about earlier with Aaron Baker, that became, we've ridden 200, 350,000, 400,000 miles over the last 10 years, right? But when you go into a, a town with a guy and you see it's his hometown, he never thought he'd get there on his Harley again, and we took him. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not us trying to, to showcase it. It just happened. Mm -hmm. Like, it naturally just happened. It wasn't like this, we scripted, we had a plan. When we pull up to his house, and he's in tears almost, Damn. and he's like, I didn't, and when we go down the coastline, and he runs in, not scripted, to one of his buddies reading the waves for the surf that day, and they hug. You I mean, we went up to his house that he grew up in. Yeah. Yeah. But when you go down the ocean front and his buddies reading the waves, and we capture that, that's, that's not intended. That wasn't planned. Yeah. Mm. And to hear his mother tell her story about how engaged she had to be. Again, not captured. We just were interviewing her. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. What, what more do you need, right? What more do you it's need? It. That was a really good spiritual journey. And I'm not trying to get deep into that. We ride and we do trips. But this was something far different. And that's been a kind of a fine... It says on the side of a Coors Light. Trips. Trips. Yeah. Trips, baby. Uh, what, Josh? I was going to say that's... Dude kind of been a fine line and we're doing this because it's what we love if we were doing it to get numbers on youtube with this and that we'd be putting out clickbait shit weird stuff and like the game we're not game but the route we're taking like we want to do genuine storytelling we want to keep things kind of the way we like them not everyone's going to like them and the numbers might not reflect that but playing that in the long game will hopefully pay off i mean people are going to meet legitimate store owners, artists, restaurateurs, historians in the next eight episodes of our Deadwood. Mm -hmm. And and you can watch it or you don't. I mean, if you don't Where like it. Where else are you going to get like a, a dive into Deadwood in 2022 in a re or not a, just a like a exposing of what it is and that people are going to be able to watch these videos while they're on their way to Sturgis. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we did plan that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, we tried that's to plan. we tried to make sure that you know if if well, we're not stupid guys. So like SEO, Sturgis is is widely searched from the beginning of June to the end of September. You just gave away our secret. No, it's not a secret. <laughs> it's out now, everyone's going to be. But it's important so that we people understand we're thoughtful about that. Could draw some uh, some some of your videos on Pornhub. They get stupid views. <laughs> <laughs> Just put. Uh, well, we did go to a brothel. There you go. Yeah, we actually all were, all four of us were in a bed in a brothel. Who's the four of us? Laura, Teresa, you, and me. All right. Well, <laughs> clears things up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, another thing that I would I would say is uh, you know with with the way content and media is being pushed as to like you know reels on instagram TikTok. um there's ways that people are pushing like or put like this they're paying people for just making something that's mindless and they and you get better if it's looping right, right. if you can get like a, a reel that like seamlessly loops back and forth where you don't know when it started over and you watch it five times that's five views add to the other hundred thousand people that saw it and then you make money the content is not necessarily inspiring it's not necessarily something that's going to uh, move you it just captured your attention for 10 seconds or 15 seconds or a minute and everybody seems to be pushing towards that and i i'm sad because to me like you you lose what like youtube in my opinion has always been informative and inspiring right it's never been about like, I guess when the whole clickbait thing, the whole uh, headline titles that had none of the, it wasn't really the premise of the video, but it's like, my bike gets stolen in Arizona Bike Week. Right. Watch the video, find out how. And then you find out in the video, absolutely bullshit. Nothing got stolen. Right. Right? You're like, what the fuck? I mean, like, 
it's so disingenuous and it's like it's not real it's you are playing you are placating towards some algorithm and things like that but at the end of the day when that shit all changes because algorithms change over time as people's attentions change they're always going to go back to good quality content that's right. What we're to do. we we and believe in that. We hope they do. I I hundred percent. But I I one hundred percent on board with what you're saying yeah. too. It's it is a sad kind of a day where, it, like a reel, mm -hmm. it's it's what catches your eye, versus what the real content is behind it, and we all get caught up in it. Yeah, it's fucking like, it's easy. I'll do know? half half the shit, that is trendy that I know is going to go off and going? make me money and give me numbers. <laughs> And half Hello. stuff I actually like. Hello. Uh oh. Body slam. <clears throat> Trash can. <laughs> but the ropes. Yeah. Say that again. I'll do. As far as reels go and content goes, I'll go half the trendy stuff I know for a fact is going to get views, going to make me money on bonuses, whatever. And then half stuff I just a song I like, a video I like, make it look cool. Because you can't do both. Yeah. Or, I mean, you can't do... <coughs> if you do one, you're a quote-unquote influencer. I'm and if you do the other, it might I don't not. Know what the, yeah. I just put up a video with this song right? on it. I don't know. Might go off, might not. But if you do so the other, the you might not grow. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's... it's You know, it, you know, as, for me, as someone who loves photography, it, it, it sucks for me because, you know, social, Instagram was always a place where you had a home for photography if you had a great photo and it captures people's attention yep. and got it and it got traction it would go far it, yeah. it would get you a lot of likes or or just exposure if you will and now that they want videos that's why they're paying people yep. to make reels and things like that that i can take a picture that you know you know just knowing from the past what kind of photos would do well especially on a trip like this and they would fucking kill it you know what i mean 400 likes used to get 4000 it's mm -hmm. like they just I mean, to me, it's like cool. I, I mean, I already have enough on on Instagram where like I can't even handle whatever opportunities would come of it. So it's not like a you know a huge deal. But as someone who loves photography and was hoping to have some kind of place in the photographic world and monetarily, it makes it hard and kind of uninspiring to want to post it because yes, I could put my photography on my website, right? And eventually I will, but it's it's such there's so many hoops you got to get to to get to my website to see it, versus when I could put it on social media, people might dig it and I'm like, hey, I want to buy a print of that. And then, well, it's funny even, too. We'll do he'll he'll put the Sony on his neck and do some just insane rollers. Yeah, yeah. And you put those up, and they don't get something as good as an iPhone photo somewhere, and it's like. Is it because people can't get that same photo? What I think it is, because I know those rollers, because I shoot those two, and I, they're fucking epic. When you get that fucking blur in the ground, mm -hmm. that movement, and God. when you put them, when you do that with them, so that's why, like in my shop, like I, I try to print the bangers, right? That one, when people show up and they see them, they're like, "Oh, that's badass." But when you see them on these metal prints, like you guys have here too, they. Uh, I would say go bigger with them. I'd say do this times five. Yeah. Make yep. them huge because when people walk in, they're not going to be able to walk past them. They're like, oh, shit. And when they see it, I think that's the thing that people have lost about photography is that we do have decent phone cameras. We do have the ability to put out a really decent photo without a lot of effort. But when you get a real shot and you blow it up. You can't make a 120 by 100 phone mm -hmm. photo. You exactly. can print that. You can print a raw image on metal for sure. And so you just get some stuff that kind of, I think it'll maybe remind people like, oh, yeah, that's what photography does. I'm used to seeing photography on my phone screen. But when you walk into somewhere, you know, when, when's the last time you went to a, a, when's the last time, I've never done it. So I'm asking you, when's the last time you did? You probably never done it either. When's the last time you went to a photo uh, you know, showing or gallery or closest show of of motorcycle photography. Closest thing to it would be Scott, Scott Jacobs. Jacobs. Yeah, that and was Deadwood. I mean, he's got this incredible. I was just going to say that I was. I didn't know the name. I wasn't familiar with his work. Mm -hmm. 
Um, visually, I was. I recognized some of it once we were in there. But he does photorealism paintings, yeah. which are just absolutely nuts. They are. So I was expecting, you know, like I said, not being familiar with his work, I was expecting some dude that might sell a couple paintings at a farmer's market that had a little gallery. And we went in there, and my mind was just blown. And you could sit there and stare at a painting, which was equivalent to a photo detail-wise, and just sit there and be like, think about it. Versus on Instagram, you got like 0.4 seconds until you look at the next thing. It's on a small screen. Yeah, It's digital. There might be external uh, distractions, it's and you're not appreciating of, it. But, but to his, his daughter... Uh-huh has an insane eye. He's got Both one that paints and one that is a photographer. Nice. And she, if you, so he takes photorealism. He could do a different background from a photo here and do a different, you know, foreground here yeah. and, and paint it, and it's insane. But if you look at his daughter's stuff and her eye, mm-hmm. it's been a while since I, to your point, of seeing, like, in a museum, in a... In a setting. Yeah, yeah. where, and she's got some insane stuff. And and the good news for him is he has the the gallery to be able to showcase that. Yeah, yeah. Where, and where a lot of bikers are going to walk can't in do and see that. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I would say it's the equivalent of like the difference between like you listening to a song you really like on your headphones versus being at an intimate concert. Right. Like not a stadium, but like a like a little acoustical small like venue. Little but like live where you're you know right there like there's a difference between how you like there's songs that i would hear through my headphones or on on you know on the radio i'm like i don't care about it but then you hear it live you're like holy shit Damn. it hits and that's and i think photography is that way too where when you scroll down your phone you see it that way it might not resonate as opposed to when you see it Thanks, on sir. a larger scale you know right in your face where you're like holy shit like if you walk into your living room and above your couch is this fucking red this shot right here blown up color edited so badass and it's just like a like i mean trust me it's going to be hard to get the wife to approve of that right. but i mean at right. the same time it's that's, funny though you don't need her <laughs> you don't need- <laughs> that's, oh, you- that's when you walk her out to the curb you grip put your arm around her shoulder turn her around and just kind of look up at the house and go do you like this <laughs> do you enjoy this do you do you like where you live and if she says yes you the, marry her. It's over. We got no, relationship. The, the bike picture's going oh, over. Yeah, the subject is over. Shut the fuck up. The bike picture's going up. We got relationship and road <laughs> trip you know, advice like you know from what? Dragon. I, I think I could find a good apartment complex for you on Google. <laughs> Steal a you Snickers and kick curb, your wife out. You, do you like this? I can say that because I don't own a house or a wife. <laughs> I've never had to do it, so it's a lot easier for me to say. Yeah, but I want to say I ha- I could do that, but I don't think I would. F- oh fall shit! I, I hope to get to the day where I want to do something like that. She's like, no, not really. No. And if I really call the shots, oh, I'm gonna do literally what I just said. Like the whole, honey, let's take a walk. She's like, okay, where? Right out in front of the house. Turn around, <laughs> just like I said. Do you like this? This looks good, right? You enjoy this? Fucking picture's going up. Shut up. <laughs> that picture right there. I don't know. I'm going to call a little party that's foul just, on that. That's oh. just how through me the grand. You're going to do it? You, you, don't, you don't know the, <laughs> the instability that I live in. The universe of instability that I live in. <laughs> Jason, I, I mean, do I double down on dumb shit? Yeah. <laughs> do I do shit where they're like, most of the guys are like, no, no, for sure. And I'm like, fuck it. Sounds dumb. Fuck it, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he'll Jane. argue about whatever, uh, whenever, for whenever. Yeah, like, but his his old lady's the same way though. Oh yeah, she leans into him. Just they're the same people, and that's why it's like, <laughs> that's why it's weird. Don't date an Italian. Don't if you don't have to. Don't do it. Avoid them. I mean, they're good people, but they're not good partners. <laughs> They're insane. <laughs> Josh is very quiet right now. <laughs> I won't, I I won't tell you her last name. She's Italian. Yeah. yeah. I found out Britta was Italiano. 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 I found out Britta was Sicilian, too. That's her thing. Ah, really? Yeah. 
She found out, so then I found out. Yeah. I didn't look. Okay. Now they're just doing We're it. sponsored by Ancestry.com here at <laughs> Fast Life Garage. Uh, did, did crazy all Sign of a sudden uh, originate in Sicily? I don't think so. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the cool girl stuff now. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, but I've no. seen The Godfather 2. Calm your tits. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I appreciate this, guys. I, we've been, we've had a lot of breaks. Hey. We, we've had a few breaks. I have no idea where we're at. Like, like, record time. Where are we at? Two forty. Oh yeah, we're we're plenty All good. Right. We're good. This isn't like a One studio first. studio studio podcasts are like you know you're in the room and you're locked in. Right, right. But uh, and when you're going live and shit, two forty is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We had a couple pee breaks. Dude, one of the so. one of the funnest ones I've been a part of in a while. Yeah, it's fun, man. So it's familiar gotta though. Dallas, you got to come to the studio. Oh, we've been, but we will see that picture right there in the wall. That's the south room of the Grand Canyon, and that was our way to Texas to see you. Oh yeah, yeah. That's is that the one where y'all put the drone up illegally? Yes, yes. Where we Josh put nope, the drone I did up not, illegally? Not me, no sir. <laughs> no, in the no, state park, no, where sir. Oh, no, no, upon, no, no. National well, Park, not me. Uh, no. Disclaimer: We have Josh. never been in the Grand Canyon <laughs> National Park with the drone <laughs> in the south it. entrance. It was Gilbert. It was, it was Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert did it. Co-flight pilot by the name of Gilbert. Uh, we don't. He is know no him. longer with the company. No, we fired him. We had to let him go. He did some bad shit. Well, no, I really appreciate it, man. You guys have, uh, you're, I mean, I'm riding my bikes across country, but you still inspire me 100%. Hey, we're uh, on the same team, you know? You know, uh, when I'm sitting there working on my table and I'm fucking wishing I was doing biker shit, you guys pop up those Wednesday <laughs> drops and, uh, you know, keep it going. Right on. And the lives are good, too, man. The lives are really fun. Like, I, I've been fortunate to be a part of it. I've caught some of the other ones, and uh, you guys do just as good a job of – capturing the the travels and the stories on that as as well as just shooting the shit in the studio here so well this is the second second or third of many that will be oh yeah 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 on. yeah we're gonna like milk say, this we we're gonna milk more. this we'll milk this all the way <laughs> yeah dude you guys do better than anybody straight up it's like yeah, a, yeah. it's like a nice is, goat is, is second to none josh over here like i said you've got a, you've got a genius working with you and you guys it is it's like you somebody said earlier like per, Hollywood production quality, studio quality, oh, yeah, and that's what you have. And well, it's, it does not. Let me know when you need some extras in the background. Just you know, I can bone saw it up for you guys. Bone yeah. saw, Billy. So we just Jayden, I've to, spent we a lot a of time house. coaching and teaching Josh on how to edit. <laughs> Layer everything I know. I learned from everything Galen. he knows. Well, every single trick. The, 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 the really cool part is uh, this is us meeting you for the first time, right? And you're. Just right there with us, man. Yeah. And as we always say, every time we meet people and yeah. we do it in our travels, we always have new friends. Yeah. So I guess you're a new friend. Come on, dude. Yeah. Yeah, the and, wolf and I think pack this is grew. Our, yeah. 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 There was the three of us. <laughs> yeah. I think now this is four. It's four. <laughs> I think this is our fourth time with Jace because we had him on our live, and we'll yeah. get him yeah. back on again as you guys get back. But uh, we – Jade is actually people are trying to reach out to him now and get him on podcast. Uh-huh. Well, he's they an should. I mean, he's an the, uh, I don't know about that, but I, uh, a good buddy of ours, Dave, is yeah, on they the, know Dave four for the road for the yep. yeah for yep. the road podcast. Sure. I think yep. I'm gonna do that when I get back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, rent out some time in this. Dave and studio. Ken, hopefully, gives me a good guys. rate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've done it two or three times with them, and, and Dave they Mendes. they were the. Dave Bennis in Milwaukee last yeah. year. Uh, he was at Sturgis when I saw you at Legends. He had walked up. He walked up. But yeah. he, he came to Milwaukee when we went to the museum and picked nice. up the bikes, and we had a drink with him there. Yeah, he's a no, good dude. He's a great no ambassador. Better than Dave. We want to yeah. thank you because when we started this thing, you know, you put us on, and it oh, was yeah. like, You're welcome. all right, we got a little bit of traction. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, it's and, a, and Four for the Road was next. Exactly. You know, and they're and not. you told us about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, the the way to grow this community, uh, you know, we're all tr- we're all putting. I wouldn't say the same content. We're all putting the same message out there, right? right? And so, uh, the more that we can kind of click together and uh, continue to promote that message in the different forms that we promote it, it's all we're doing is uh, helping Harley out hand over fist. So, <laughs> <laughs> in, in the words of a great man, Zombie Mike, a rising tide. Raises all ships. So, so well, yeah. how could you have a brand that the name is so 
awesome for this industry that everyone that has one posts pictures and you get all this free marketing. Yeah. Why did I get a drunken tattoo in the middle of a podcast with a Harley <laughs> Davidson logo behind my ear? I have no fucking idea. So you're branded. I'm branded, uh, and I re- I don't I I don't regret it, but I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good time. It was a really if good time. If I won the lottery, I would, yeah, I would check. Ah, that'll never happen. For that. Well, we want to thank you, see twolanelife.com. Go to our Instagram, yeah. at twolanelife. Shameless plug. Uh, shameless plug here. Uh, it's, you're supposed to plug it. Yep. Absolutely. Check out our bundle sales, too, please. Woo! Bundle sales. Oh, that's you want to get, get some great thrashing products, the only way to get bundled up with all the things you need for the floorboards or handlebars is to go through the Tulane Life. That's yeah. right. Dot com, right? As a matter yeah. of fact, I saw some special things going on sale now today that if you don't get them when this when this sale's over, they're gone. When they hear I this, think those will be gone yeah, by the time this it probably uh, podcast will be so, drops. Some of you jump on. But if, also, you can go if you're yourself. fucking lucky, <laughs> if you're fucking lucky, yeah. there may be a couple left. But so, dude, don't time, sleep on this. By the time this launches, we'll yeah. have a new something. And for they'll sure. go on there and find the new something. Yeah. So well, the good thing is to know that when you buy something from brands like this, you're you're supporting motorcyclists, right? Right. And that's one thing I've always like tried to align myself with brands who rode bikes, made parts, and continue to put back into the community. Right. Not necessarily saying they're buying shit for the community, but just they're putting more. They're riding their bikes. They're buying bikes. They're, they're buying other manufacturers' parts. They're wor- it, there's so much you can do to put back into the community of the motorcycle industry or culture. You don't necessarily have to, you know, it's not that hard. You just right. brands, you know, if you're a brand that like makes all these badass parts, but then every weekend you're out on your boat, like you're not, you're you're kind of taking from us as right. opposed to right. putting it back in. So yeah, no boats allowed. Right, right. I'll unfriend you. Shaking hands with America. That's what we do. Yeah. And that's another thing. I know a lot of people, we've talked on it before, how a lot of times these big, big names, you think these are just these giant companies, and it's it's a lot smaller of a crew than you think it is. And after being here, seeing you guys work your ass off, you know, for a couple of hours, getting to the point where we could do the podcast, dude, support the Tulane Life Crews because this is – like I said, they're they're the ones answering your phone calls that don't fulfilling your orders. They're busting their balls and you get a dude. What the most random? Oh, I want this guy. Like, and you waited on him a half hour. We delayed lunch. Where just yeah. so you guys can come in, get him dialed in. And it's a, I mean, this is a this is a spot for you, the normal regular guy. Yeah. And it's so much smaller of a crew than you think, and they're gonna take care of you. For Thank sure. you, Jaden. Right I've on. seen it. Yeah. That's you guys, cool, man. You guys are working your ass off, and I just yeah. I hate people that think it's. The, the she your name they think everything <laughs> just happens automated this no, it doesn't this is in AT&T this is in Costco and it's you this guys real America you guys are doing yeah you're doing the Lord's work cheers thank brother <laughs> thank you yeah. thank you brother let's get and this down smack brother. down come on brother <laughs> wrap that one up alright <laughs> cheers wow. see you down the road take that out Jace when you listen to this later I'm fucking don't take my whole voice out peace I really hope you guys enjoyed that Had a great time hanging out with uh, my good friends Over there at Tulane Life Uh, Hopefully you guys are checking out their YouTube videos Um, They have one of the highest production value videos That I feel like I ever watch on YouTube And it's been awesome watching it grow over the years And our friendship grow as well And I can't wait till we can ride some more miles together If you guys enjoy these podcasts, you know you can check out our sponsors. They help keep this thing running along with our Patreon where you can support the podcast but also get unreleased content. Uh, That content can be viewed or listened to through the app that is on iOS and Android. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good shit on there, so check it out. And uh, don't forget, guys, wherever you listen to this podcast on, uh, like it, review it, rate it, however, whatever it gives you an option just to help us get more traction out there with the podcast space. And uh, hopefully you guys are going to be, uh, you know, going to Sturgis and having a great time there. I don't know if I'm going to be making Sturgis this year, unfortunately, but trust me, if you have the opportunity to go, please go. It's an amazing event. And go check out those videos that Tulane Life is putting out about Sturgis behind the rally. So check it out. And um, we're going to be back soon with some more podcasts for you guys. Stay tuned. We'll see you later. 